Bray Wyatt is who I am, and it's what I want to portray. It's what I want to be remembered for, and that's who I am. Man. When I go and do these promos, I go with the intention of I have an idea of what I want to say, what a message I want to deliver. And while I'm out there, it just drains out of me, man. It just flows out of me, and it's it's real. There's no lies and no nothing I made up. I just I'm just giving you myself. And that's what they are, man. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Let me get it through your thick, fat skull with some simple math. See, normally if you go one-on-one -on -one with another wrestler, you got a 50-50 chance of winning. But I'm a genetic freak and I'm not normal. So you got a 25% chance at best to beat me. Then you add my boy Cole watching my back to the mix, your chances of winning drastically go down. See, at our match at Grand Slam, you got a 33 and one-third chance of winning, but I got a 66 and two-third chance of winning because everyone in New York knows you can't beat me. So Samoa Joe, you take your 33 and one-third chance minus my 25% chance, and you got an eight and one-third chance of winning at Grand Slam. But then you take my 75% chance of winning since we're wrestling in my home state of New York and then you add 66 and two third percent chance I got a 141 and two third percent chance of winning at Grand Slam see Joe the numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for you in Arthur Ashe disaster Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast filmed in glorious gravel vision and encoded with blast processing. We chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay-per-view by pay-per-view. You know, so it's all in, so I was kind of thinking of casino puns, so it's your Joker with the red hot poker, Jay Hunter. Hard nips with all the chips, OC. <laughs> and he's got the royal flush and a hairy bush. It's V1. <laughs> What's the crack? It's the 27th of August at Wembley Stadium, Greater London. It's AEW All In, and it's coming up right now. Welcome. Uh, is there anything English version of like Nagas? Feasts. Feast. Welcome, Feast Bars. Happy days are here again. Pear, Yorkshire pear. No, oh, no, is no, that no. a pudding or a no. pie? Shepherd's cottage pie. Oh, oh. She oh which one am I doing? Cottage, cottage pie. Yeah. Cottage pie. It is two a.m. Two o four to be exact. <laughs> Live from Steve's bed. Murder <laughs> <laughs> couch, you. What for the bloody murder couch, you know? <laughs> so we bring to you the absolute worst show OSW has brought. Actually, we survived Final Resolution. Survive Genesis of the Main Event Mafia arc, so here we go. You're getting a bit of OSW on holiday. Anyway, how are you feeling, V1? Great. Shockingly not knackered after that, still kind of wired and raring to go. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot wait to hear what you lads say about a specific event we're going to be discussing. Mm, might this be an event that you were not privy to? Yes, I was privy to one of those events, but not the other one. Oh, yeah. Okay, there, there we go. Long-term booking. There we go. Okay, so let's get this show in the room. Oh yeah, and um, do you like ooh, any of these lovely Spider Brett and their Street Fighter Lex Yoko t-shirts? Do you like that? Eh? Yeah, eh, man. Eh, eh, yeah, man. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the quality of the eh. ad. <laughs> <laughs> How was your trip to uh, Wembley? very good because we are staying only about a half an hour walk away it doesn't even feel like a half no. an hour i'm pretty no. sure it's closer to like 20 minutes even when you're beside me like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> brilliant like prime location and it doesn't happen often but kudos to my missus for organizing it well yeah. done yeah. yeah big gorilla uh, brilliant she smashed it out of it yeah. we are here with outsiders <laughs> we are here it's not just the osw gang we are here with others Normies. Other similarly named people. <laughs> <laughs> but no J's. You can only do one yeah, J, please. Yeah, yeah. We have two of my friends here, both called. Pa! Pa! 
<laughs> so when he's on the couch for a while, just say he's gaming, a big gaming fan, you know, if he's just sitting on the couch for a while and his legs go dead, does he go, ah, I can't feel my legs? <laughs> 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 and how, how is it being your friend and being called Paul? Uh, I have great restraint. I segregate, I compartmentalize. So our lives in OSW are separate to my life with the two pals. <laughs> But yeah, well, I get through. I get through. Uh, OSE pro segregation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, are, th- are these the lads whom, like, if they ask you about wrestling, you start every response with, "Well, in the business." Yes, this is, and they appreciate it. Like, obviously, they pulled the piss, and rightly so. But us being in the business, we're used to that. You know, we, we you know, as we are in the business, we have to. <laughs> Get used to talking about being in the business. That's it, you know? <laughs> Workers <laughs> gotta work. <laughs> do you need to preface every sentence with the sort of, in, in the business? Well, in the business, in we do it this way, yeah. <laughs> I remember they were giving you grief over it, and then the next time we were recording, you came to me, and it was like, they're saying I'm not in the business. Jay, I'm in the business, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, yeah, Steve, you're in the business. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to the arena. We met some wonderful fans outside. Had our Virgil books freshly cut. Thank you, Stephen. And Kim as well. So you lads went through the turnstiles. Oh, uh, yes. Left us on our own. And me and V1 had to go find our way to the presser section. And it's like, oh, so where where do these people go? And it's like, just a few miles down this way. You have to go all the way around down the concourse. London. And like <laughs> underneath, <laughs> underneath Wembley. Like you're going to pop up like Rey Mysterio in an entrance, you know? What's what's a press? Do tell more about this presser section. Why why would you, why did you have to go there? Uh huh. Steve seems to be mates slash frenemies with like half the roster in AEW, and so I was like, you know, hey Steve, you're mates with Max. Come on, get get some tickets. Come on, why else are you tweeting? Come on, <laughs> motherfucker, get me free stuff. Never mind you. Poke him. Poke you as well. Poke him repeatedly. Well, get me stuff. And anyway. see what happens. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't want to put him over and ruin his gimmick or anything, but yeah, he was super fucking helpful and we were able to get two uh, press passes. So we were up in the press box. There was literally media outlets from all around the world. Uh, and, you know, if they get one or two press passes, those three gobshites are not getting <laughs> more than two. Uh, yeah. Listen, listen, the BBC got two. I think OSW can swing three. Come on, come on. <laughs> Yeah, so but no, but seriously, they what were has more credibility. They were great. Uh, Max yeah, and yeah. Adam, really, really helpful, awesome guys. A different Adam, by the way. Yes, no, Adam, Adam Cole. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Adam. There's a separate scanner area where no one's around, and then you go through styles, and then you go up a elevator. There is a fridge with different drinks in it, non booze. Although, does that not help the stereotype? the first thing I was looking for was booze. <laughs> you know, I was just looking oh, like for just free shit. everywhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I had a look at the food section as well. There was three options. Beef and Oof. pasta, piri-piri chicken and rice, and a couple of beans, and there is salmon. And I was like, well, it's not happening, salmon. Even if it was free, I loathe myself not to have the free thing, but, I like, I just want to eat it, so. No. Now, <laughs> if you would like a blow-by-blow account of the beef, it free. is the most agreeable beef that you could serve because there's like there's flavor in it but there's no uh spice so the maximum amount of people will be able to eat it yeah and the peri peri chicken i'd say it was, it was bad. a bit bland, it yeah. Yeah. bland. Yeah. listen as far as free meat goes <laughs> readily available goes wonderful so uh thank you did thank you, you take all you want but eat all you take well i did the first half oh oh shame shame no, I, I like I ruined the meals that I had that no so no one else could. Yeah, have of, them. Course, of course. I just took they, the good bit. I just took the meat. They need to know it's and, rubbish. And and then just he swirled just around. opened it up and just went. <laughs> it, you know, no one else can have this. So I'm imagining a lot of standing and eating. Am I? Oh, you right? get you get seats, but the best thing about it is you get like a high table, so you could put your laptop or whatever you had there. And there's actually like a LAN cable sticking out. So if you wanted a dedicated port, that was pretty great. And there is a plug underneath as well. And there is a wonderful 7-inch 360p monitor with the SCART cable. Well, not even SCART. It was like, do you know that cable with the Atari came in that has, it's like grey and then it has a wire coming into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it was connected to that. It was like, like a prong. It's got prongs yeah. at the, yeah, at the yeah. top. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a weird. <laughs> it's a weird connection. I've never because it's obviously digital. But why is there this interference onto it? So, I don't. Know. 
Oh, uh, you know, kind of looking down the table. See, oh, anyone re- recognise there? Alvarez and Dave, big tuna melter was there. Yeah. And I was like, what's the right time to hassle them? You know. You have to talk. It's to them, tough because right? they're they're working. Like I'm not. I'm slacking. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. They're, they have to do four podcasts on this next yeah. week. Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, and, and Meltzer needs to go back and sit on his couch and hold his microphone. I mean, you know, that's that's critical. <laughs> he is literally Amongst talking his... as we are talking. Yeah. On his couch, yeah. holding a microphone. Yeah. Yes. With just stacks of papers around him. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, his couch is just stacks of papers <laughs> strategically <laughs> put together. Um, okay, so outlet, media outlet or podcaster or whatever you want to call it, that you were like, I'm going to check how many subscribers you have. Mm. <laughs> You know, you shouldn't be here. Or were you the lads that they were thinking you shouldn't be here? Hmm. Pr- we're not the bottom of the barrel. No, no, not there's, the there's, there's, there's people not. below. Yeah, oh, yeah, great. Well done. I'm, most, yeah, I'm yeah, proud yeah, of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you both. We're not at the bottom rung. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah, the we're bottom. the second bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm not, anyway, this is the circuitous way to say All right, let's start the pre show. Who better than Jeff Jarrett to open the biggest show in wrestling history? Shane Sewell. In- Whoa, you got me. Okay. <laughs> okay. In 2023. It's amazing, yes. isn't yes. it? Yes. Barely 40 years in the business. <laughs> <laughs> this young book. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes out, you know, he grabs the microphone and it's, it is Johnny generic. You fans are terrible. America fans are great. There's not a lot to say. Karen was there as well. She, I think she grabbed the mic at one point and just got booed out of the building, of course, because she's a great heel. And uh, a theme song hit that I didn't recognize. And who should appear? Only the New Year's baby. Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What's his, what's his theme song like? It's that good. I can't remember it. It's like, well, Pa! <laughs> yeah, yeah. He it's- was the bird show! <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what did the baby say? The big uh, baby. He didn't. I don't think he said anything. He just he came out in a suit. He probably just cried a yeah. bit. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Turned heel five times. <laughs> Had a bit of a cry. Yeah. <laughs> um, we came out with Grado, who got a, a big, very, very big pop. Um, I, I am assuming Tony didn't spring for Madonna. And uh, no, actually, yeah, surprisingly, no. And they came in the ring in a bit of a scuffle. Jay Lethal was floating around there too. Grado, guitar shot in double J. Big pop, everyone uh, was happy. Very, very standard segment, but the crowd were already hot at this point. Yeah. Did people accept Jeff Jarrett as a heel? Or were oh, they God, just... yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Booed out of the building. Oh, yeah, so it worked. All right, good for him. Good yeah. for him. One bit of sky, re Jeff Jarrett. On the Saturday, there's like a welcome AEW party, 20 quid, please. In a box park, and there was another thing on the Sunday morning, which we did not attend. Nah. Um, Jeff and Karen did a talk at it, and they had to send in questions. Uh, oh, God. What do, what do you want, oh, Karen? Is it going to be something about Kurt? It was like, who's a better ride? Uh, Jeff For Jarrett or sake. Kurt Angle? Oh, my God, what a cretin would ask that. Come on. Did they not filter out these questions? What is your question? That's crazy. That's asking for it. Yeah. Probably, wow. Probably Jeff. She said. No, no, no. I, I'm. I, oh, you're guessing. Yeah, yeah. You're surprising. <laughs> probably. Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm thinking Kurt Angle. He would be all about work rate. He Dolph Ziggler it. You know. Kurt is about the work rate, but Jeff is about knowing when to do the right thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So Kurt would be doing like moonsaults. And- <laughs> <laughs> Just jutting in here, watching the pre-show back on telly, I have five points to make. One <laughs> is said four times. <laughs> uh, Clearly fans. Yeah. Kip Sabian. He just says, oh yeah, Kota Ibushi's going to win, whether he, he wants, wants to or, or not, yet. which I loved, but nobody on the panel got the reference, so he just said oh, it again. No. 
Kenny Omega, I feel like in this one, he's going to win it whether he wants to or not. Kenny, Ibushi, they're going to win this one whether they want to or not. But, you know, it didn't work for the audience in front of him. But, hey, it popped the internet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed it. Powerhouse Hobbs, when he comes out, he cuts a heel promo on a crowd that hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> 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 Redeemer Miro confronts him for slagging 80,000 chavs. That was great. Oh, good. Okay. The big news from that is that Simon Miller was one of the security guards. I saw pictures of it. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that so cool? Because yeah. he loves Miro as well. And he popped getting thrown into the security railing. Well done, mate. Um, you could also see him at the bar during the stadium stampede. It's so cool. Well done, mate. And the real main event, Jeff Jarrett. He cuts a wonderful 70s, I don't like here promo, calling us slags, wankers, and name checks, Big Daddy. <laughs> And try day stacks. He calls the fans fannies. He's like, you're all just fannies and wankers out here. I was like, I, I love Jeff Jarrett. And I'm so happy he got to come out on the biggest wrestling show of all time. What a legend. On the pre-show, the biggest pre-show of all time. <clears throat> the pre-pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> because we all thought that zero hour was a one hour show yeah, but it was yeah. two hours yeah. it was broken up into two sections and this was the main event of hour one yes okay. i am so glad we didn't realize that yeah, yeah. No. all right no 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 it wasn't big daddy it wasn't haystacks First match, the pre-show opening event, Aussie Open versus MJF and Adam Cole, baby. Mark Davis is beardy Kyle Fletcher, the younger guy, the young boy. Sad face, no Lord Gideon Gray, part of United Empire. He's great. Met him at New Japan Royal Quest out in Crystal Palace. Oh. Super, super. Wait, is he, he's, he's, he, he's a meanie. He's a big meanie and not a lovely lad. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. I, I really yeah. like him. One of my favourite entrances of all time, I think. I'm enjoying it so much. Better than you, baby. I love the two themes brought together. I love the little actions they do and how they play off each other. But my favourite part of the theme is when they go boom, right? But the timing, it's not even difficult. It's really not difficult to get the timing right. You just watch for when they do the thumb to the head. But people are so excited and I need to say boom, I'm going to say fucking boom, I'm going to do it. They'll just say it. They're walking to the ring and people, boom, <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. And it ruined it. It fucking ruined it. I do think there's a certain fan, like a certain type of fan that needs everybody to know how big a fan they are and that they know what's going to happen. Oh. And, and so they'll say it like maybe a half second before it. To be like, yeah, told you, boom, yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking got it. <laughs> got it. It's like somebody commenting on a YouTube video first. It's the same thing. Yeah. AF, Adam Cole, they are feeling it here at Wembley, and they're calling for the double clothesline. Now, these lads are also main eventing tonight, so we'll go through that whole storyline and build later on. But MJF is having a bromance with Adam Cole. He's still got his heel shtick, but in a kind of baby face capacity he's still a scumbag but he's your scumbag uh, he's gone full baby face yeah. now right he's yeah 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 definitely and he did it with no effort like obviously there is effort but it feels like there's no effort he is basically overnight he decided he wants to be a baby face incredible pro harbor to kick off not letting mjf and cole do their pose man just soaking it in such a happy positive crowd there were kangaroo kid chants and then MGF does the kangaroo pose. <laughs> I just want to big up that MGF has, like, he was never bad, but he's just improved more his in-ring wrestling. Definitely. Which, like, because his mic work is incredible. He's my favorite guy to hear on the mic. But his wrestling, like, he's still improving his wrestling. And it's like, holy shit, he had that match with Takeshita back in February. 
and he does like a rikishi bump off the top rope lands on his feet and then they trade rolling elbow forearm smashes it's like holy shit but he, he's stepped it up fucking hell well done. anyway well done to him rolling elbow connects from mjf to cast oh, oh what a lariat but he nails it, it worked yeah it works Fletcher sent in. Oh, pulls out oh, ladder. High on the back of his neck. Two, three. And yeah, yeah pretty breezed, breezed those belts off those lads. Sorry, mate. Uh, how did you like this match? I was petrified. You are the two main eventers of the biggest show in AEW history. And the fact that they also sent these guys out in the opening match of the pre-show, I was watching them going, do nothing, lads. Like, pose. But, like, don't actually flex when you pose because I don't want you to pull any tendons, you know? So I, I thought that they worked like a really simple house show level match but the fact that the act and the angle and the characters are so over it completely worked i do love that they gave us the kangaroo kick followed by the double clothesline who could have guessed that in 2023 these two wrestle geniuses would have gotten a double clothesline as the most over move in professional wrestling maximum pop for minimum effort they just run while holding hands and the place came unglued. They could have gone out there and sat in a headlock for eight minutes, and the fans would have gone mental. And just you see know? Alvarez in the corner, is like, yeah, <laughs> caught it in the ring. Stoke, club, stoke, club. Bring out Buddy Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's here. Nobody's here. Damn, no novelty teleport answering machine tapes. Next up is Hookass Mofo versus no longer Jungle Boy. It's Jungle Man, Jack Perry. How disappointed were you with the theme? So the two AEW themes that I would listen to most would be Cult of Personality and uh, Baltimore. Brilliant. And, and my kids love it. Obviously, I knew he didn't use the theme anymore, but I wish he just for one night, just bring it back. Just because there could have been 80,000 people singing along to your theme rather than, you know, obviously. Deafening silence. Yes. Yeah. And, and like his, his theme now is a, obviously a very famous classical piece, but nobody's going to sing along with it. You also don't have anything on the screen at your entrance. I've been very underwhelmed with this heel turn so far. He, he, there's a lot of work to do. Um, I think he's a finished product in terms of pants that he's wearing. Yeah, we called but, it months ago. But it's it's like test pants in 2023 because, you know, the jeans and trousers in general have been getting skinnier over the years. <laughs> so it's what Tess would wear, God rest his soul, if he was alive today. Well, you know, Jungle Boy is very skinny. So even though the pants are getting skinny, you know, like they're still flared on him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely not bin bags. Like, Rey Mysterio used to wear bin bags. Shawn Michaels wears bin bags. They're not bin bags. Mysterio, how do they not, like, catch wind when yeah. he's jumping, you know? Yeah. There's, there's a lot of excess fabric there. Yeah, there, it's know? it's unnecessary. You're, like, it's bad for the environment. So if you're, <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the crowd, like, get them off you! Get them off you! <laughs> How was Hook? Hook. It, like, Hook's gimmick is that he's handsome, is it? That is that it? Because he's not a boxer. I think when Hook debuted, there was something very special. Uh, I was like, this dude is electric. He's unlike anybody else. Like, he feels different. He's young. You know, he's cool. Got a good look. But I feel like two fucking years later and he's in the same spot. I don't think he's gotten any better. Uh, I don't think he's capable of going out there and having a long match. And I don't think that's his fault. Uh, I don't don't think you can get better unless you're put in a place to go out and work and get better. I want to say like the ship has sailed, but like Hulk of 2023 is the same as Hulk of 2021. And that's not how it should be. He should be getting better. Is there any kind of feud he's had that be kind of emblematic of... His problem was like, 
No, and that's the issue, is that he doesn't get put in feuds, he doesn't get given time to talk, he doesn't have long matches so that he can improve. So yeah, I, I was like kind of meh on this, like I, I'm not particularly hot on this feud. Uh, I don't think either guy is really clicking at the minute. Yeah. It's kind of sad because like Jack Perry, he'd spend a lot of time with Christian and Christian really bring out the great promos in him and you see a lot of, you know, fire and potential and it's like, all right, so Christian started off, he's doing something with um, Luchasaurus and it's like, all right, we got Hook, got Hook for you. Yeah. Any anything on this match? I did like the spot on the car where Jack Perry did uh, Rolling Thunder on Hook. That was about it. Rain down and hook. Down and hook's in. Red rum. Red rum is locked in. No salvation right now. No, no, no salvation. Oh, 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 oh. And oh yeah, hook won the title back off Jack Perry. So I was thinking, hmm, is he in some kind of bother backstage? Why are they taking the title off him so quickly? He don't. He only won it about what three weeks ago. Yep. Because I know he had a bit of beef. 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 With, um, with Punk. What had you heard about Punk and Jack Perry? Just that there was some kind of argy-bargy, but this is from a couple of weeks ago, not tonight. Tonight yeah. stuff is new. Yeah, yeah. So there was supposedly an incident a couple of weeks ago where Jack Perry wanted to do a spot with, like, real glass. And then Punk, who is a wrestling veteran, you know, he felt that it was his place to tell Jack Perry that, mate, it's not the best idea to do spots with real glass. You've got to think about your future and you've got to be safe. I think Jack Perry got a bit miffed about it. Uh, There was a bit of a shouting match back and forth and he felt that it wasn't Punk's place to give him advice and it's Tony's and the medical staff's job to either give something the final okay or not, and Punk can keep his opinions in in his pocket. (laughs) 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 And yeah, and so that's what led up to tonight with the (laughs) alleged issue. Splicey Punk is like, I'm fed up with this world. (laughs) (laughs) Right at the page of Rob Van Dam. Jack Perry crushing and then crushing. Real glass. Crushing the abdomen. Go cry me a river. God damn it, I'm on fucking Punk's side about that. Because it's like, he's looking after your health because you're too big of a carny to not look after it. So he's letting you know that this isn't safe for future you. Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's fair to say that we're all a bit, you know, we haven't been overly enamored with Punk and the kind of news and the rumors that have come out over the last year. He seems to be... A big uh, baby! A b- a big baby! It seems like he's a big dickhead. But I think you're right. I think he was in the right to tell Jack Perry that that was an incredibly stupid thing to do. And you're young. You're going to want to do this for a long time. And you're going to want to make a lot of money. Let's think about what we're going to do, mate. You know? Jack. You f***ed up. And so what happened right before Punk's match? There was an altercation backstage before Punk came out for the opening match on the main card. Jack Perry and CM Punk had words. There's rumors that there were punches thrown. Then there's other rumors that there were no punches thrown. There's rumors that Jack Perry was choked. So Perry and CM Punk got into a fight backstage, most likely stemming from what happened a few weeks ago. And in all of this, Jack Perry sounds like an absolute bell end baby. Mate, grow up. I wouldn't have thought I would be in most backstage issues with Punk, but on this, I'm firmly on Punk's side. Do you think it's not like what you say, but how you say it? Kind of thing. Do you think he went up to Jack Perry and he's like, stop being a mark? Do you know what I mean? Like he Probably. Just, do you know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So Jack Perry was sent home or yes. sent to his back to the hotel yeah. Yeah. tonight, but not Punk. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, just at the opening of the post-show press conference, Tony did open up and he confirmed, yes, the rumors are true. There was a backstage issue tonight. People were sent home and there's going to be an investigation. I can't say anything, so please don't bother asking questions about it. It will literally just be wasted breath. And yeah. Uh, Gotta let the cult of holic guys get their questions in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Who are lovely. Yeah, they actually were. Bang on. We're all about positivity and having a good time. And if somewhere along the way we get into some fights, I don't want to fight you. 
and we have disagreements, someday I'm going to kick your ass. Next up, it's the real world's champion, not Ric Flair in 91, but CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. Holy shit, going back to the early days of ROH. Um, Summer Punk and all that. Wow, holy shit, lads. What is going on? Samoa Joe out first. Badass Samoa Joe unanimously cheered because everyone in the crowd is an AW fan. More than likely, they're a big smirk because you're watching the alternative, you know? And I was like, oh, it's one of the things I really wanted to know. Cult personality hits. The question is not when will you hear booze. It's like, when will it overpower it and be like, Punk will hear these booze, <laughs> you know? So it was pretty much, <laughs> How was this uh, from down in the raft? Over the, the, yeah. with the peasants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, plebside. It was <laughs> plebside. <laughs> 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 if you can call oh, wrestling e- eating without Perry Perry <laughs> can you call that wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> See, you never saw the heel turn coming. I know. You never saw I know. It. We should also say that we did leave the press box after the opening tag match and we joined you in Plebville. In Gen Pop. <laughs> yeah, Gen <laughs> Gen Pop. <laughs> So, yeah, so so we all watched the show together and then myself and Jay went back up uh, for the main event and the post-show screw. Oh, oh, I was, one of the pals said, uh, in good line, he said, uh, it's complaining time. He just, hey, it's okay. quite good, isn't it? Okay. Quite good. He asked yeah. me to tell the people. Get him he over. Said it, yeah. I'm a pa. Pa. So, um, what I will say is, I think we should all be careful. Because you know what Punk is like, he'll take his ball and he'll go home and that's the last we'll see of him on TV. Whatever you think of him, he's one of the biggest stars in the last 20 years. And I still think AEW are lucky to have him. Outside, like maybe Roman Reigns is a bigger star. I, I, other than that, I think Punk is the biggest star in the world. I definitely can't argue that. Um, whatever, if you like him, if you don't like him, doesn't matter. He is a fucking great professional wrestler across the board and it comes like his timing and his smartness and when to do things and telling a story and working the crowd and just just you know making a show out of it he's brilliant he is so fucking good and you can tell like even though he was getting booed out of the building he reveled in it and he worked that match heel and i don't know if they knew this was going to happen or if they get out there in the ring and punk and joe go all right mate you know we have to flip. Joe, you're going to be face and I'm going to be heel. And if that's what they did, that's even more proof that these two were just legendary workers because it was brilliant and it was seamless. Oh, oh no. Well, luckily like we said, they know each other very well. Seesaw on the ropes. You know, it's the kind of Christian spot where he kind of teeters. Hey, hey, a bit of that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Punk chucks Joe. Joe's on the outside, Punk, and he just like starts hot dogging, and everyone starts booing, and he's just, all right, okay, okay, we'll do that. Then Punk dives to the outside. Joe does the OC walk away. Gets a huge pop. Yeah, and I especially love that, Jay. Hey, it's the OC walk yeah. away. I appreciated that. <laughs> Joe OC. Oh, Punk gets swung into the commentator's desk, and just, bleh, and then, he John Moxley's it. He comes out pissing blood. I was like, what's under there? <laughs> Errant nails. <laughs> yeah. It's a shoddy construction company. And daddy of all cons is when a wrestler is literally beaten to a bloody pulp. With the concealed blade, he secretly makes a small incision in the crease of his brow. He knows exactly where to cut. It's hard to believe how far pro wrestlers will go to make the carnage look real and keep the fans coming back for more. He's a shill. That was genuinely one of my favorite spots of the entire night. I thought that was awesome. That popped me big. Joe is loving it. He's getting such a huge ovation, you know, just kind of soaking it in. And I was just thinking, man, this is... Is you know really loud crowd, but this is an open air stadium. Imagine if it would be an enclosed arena and all the noise didn't just go up into the air. Do you know? 
it would be deafening. Every Rolling Stones cross on and see CM Punk, shoulder tackle, and then shoulder tackle. I was like, oh, the cheek of you. And then, because he's terrible. How are you, How dare you shoulder tackle Samoa Joe to the mat? Like, And then, he, you know, he does this kind of side turny slam. And then he was like, you can't see me. All right, I'm uh, beep, sold. Beep, beep, beep. It's so good. Yeah, well, oh, God damn you, damn you. <laughs> he's great. <laughs> can be sour about him, but at the end of the day, man, he's so good. And he get, does a big leg drop. Brilliant. And then Samoa Joe hulks off. You <laughs> Does a punch, punch and a punch and a big snap slam. Then we get a corner, nothing. You know, he just runs up and into Joe's waiting arms. You got to love that. And <laughs> Joe, you're an Oggy slam. Brett's rope pedigree. Holy shit. One, two, three. And CM Punk retains. Fucking Pepsi plunge finished. Punk bringing it back, man. Ring of Honor. Love it. Now looking for the Pepsi plunge. Joe face serves. There's a cover. And Punk has done it. Are you kidding? What a save by Joe. And it's over. Really good. Really good match. But you mentioned it to me, Steve, as well. It's the most obvious win of the night. Even more so than... The opening tag match on the pre-show. Joe is never winning that title. No. It was almost stupid. It's such a shame they've already had Punk and Joe wrestling on collision. With shitty fucking finishes. Yes. So this is how many years in in the making? I don't know, 15? But they spoiled it by already wrestling, but still, I loved it. Um, They're both great. And it was was a lot of fun. Yeah. Punk is a terrible athlete. He is clumsy, he's awkward, he's slow. He has all of the grace of Homer Simpson. Uh, (laughs) But, man, he gets it. And the fact that he gets it so good just covers for any lack of anything else. And he's a brilliant pro wrestler. And I love this match. This was probably my second favorite match of the night. I I really, really dug it. Is he like... You know when Homer puts on a load of weight and he's in the moo moo and he's look- <laughs> and, he- and he's looking for a ride to the uh, power plant and he has a sign. It's like, "Give me a win or everybody dies." <laughs> <laughs> no, it, yeah, it's one of those like his elbow is still terrible. Like I love that he likes doing it, especially if he's trying to channel Macho Man Randy Savage, which arguably has the greatest elbow in history, and his one is so bad. Do you hate it because he lands on his feet and then falls over? Is is that? <laughs> yeah, like it. It is like like Mrs. Doyle <laughs> on the yeah. windowsill. It's yeah. the safest elbow drop in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you doing this? You don't understand anything, man. Leave your stupid comments in your pocket. Don't touch me, motherfucker! Get out! Stop it! Stop it! I kill you, I'll bring him in full of hey, Stop it! I kill you, you bastard! It's not over. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with his world. Because in London, Kenny will have two of his greatest tag team partners of all time. The Hanger and Ibushi. We're gonna show you guys. It's more than about fighting. This is about heart, passion, soul, friendship. Bullet Club Gold. Is that like Killer Instinct Gold? Ooh. Like, great IP, terrible port. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've mapped my muscles, give me shit for that. Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Takeshita with Don Callis versus the Golden Elite, Hangman Page, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi. I don't know if it was the same on TV, but like live crowd reaction, it was just Kenny was the most over, and then Hangman? Yeah. There was a spot in the opening couple of minutes where you can tell it was booked by someone who's deep in the wrestling bubble, probably like a big fan of like Japanese wrestling where they're like, oh my God, we have like Jay White, who is legitimately one of the best professional wrestlers in the world. And we have Kota Ibushi, who some people would argue is the best professional wrestler in the world. And they're both legends in New Japan Pro Wrestling and they get into the ring together for their You Think You're a Special moment and maybe 1,000 out of the 81,000 people there occurred. But luckily, 
it picked up. Would Tony pay for Limp Biscuit? Like, you think you're special? Just to play during that yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That... <laughs> <laughs> you think you're special. special. You do. Kenny and Ibushi, they had the greatest tag name in history. The Golden Lovers. Back in New Japan in 2009, the old tag partners, they reunited in 2018 in New Japan when Kenny had the world and Ibushi had the never open weight. They lasted a year before Kenny left. But get the mega powers, rejoin in AEW. Ibushi, is that purple Kenta? Yes, that is is purple Kenta that we were marking out to 15 years ago. Yeah. This is a man, I I was telling Uka, I was like, Steve, this man is in his 40s. And Steve was like, fuck off. This dude was like, 23 max yeah um steve can you talk a little bit about hangman i thought your point earlier was excellent so i was saying that the hangman build to dethroning kenny omega is the best storyline aw have ever told and i think he's a phenomenal in-ring professional wrestler and i think he's got a good look and he's a good promo but i didn't enjoy his title run If your only metric for judging professional wrestling is how good are the moves that happen from bell to bell, then I'd say that his title run was phenomenal. He had great matches with Lance Archer. He had amazing matches with like uh, Brian Danielson, and it was fantastic. But unfortunately, that's not the only metric by which you should be judging professional wrestling. And I thought that his title run overall was a failure because in my opinion he was white hot before he beat Kenny and I thought that by the time he lost that title belt he had fallen to the mid card and so he was lower on the totem pole post title run which is the moment that's meant to make him and permanently elevate him as a main eventer and he hasn't gotten back there yet and it's two fucking years later you know So yeah, wildly talented man. I think he's phenomenal, but I think he was let down by booking and I don't think he has recovered from it. And then you have the likes of Jay White, relatively new, and he's already above Hangman in the pecking order, you would think. Yeah, he's so good. It's ridiculous. He's great. Not a fan of Juice Robinson. It's a knockoff Brian Pillman, but really annoying. It's played more for comedy. Mm. And for me, it's like, I get whiplash when I watch him and Jay White come out because I I see Jay White as a top line serial killer level heel and then I see the baby guns and juice and they're going comedy and like bang bang pew 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 I can't get into this group at all I can't wait until Jay White is by himself and he's a top level heel gunning for the belt When I peel this away from your carcass and then you can go and sulk and sob with all your loser paws because you're just like them. Bushy and White start off with some, ooh, standoff to raise the crowd. Hey, shit, nobody cares. Sorry, lads. You think you're you're special. special. You do. Tope Conjuro by Kenny over the top. Effortless, safe, perfect. Now let's see Paul Allen's Tope. American Psycho? The Target. business card. Yeah, very yeah. good, very good. Eh, eh. Yeah, just sorry, I, I couldn't stop thinking of Bushi and Jay. It was like, it's just like, there's a decent wedge of people, talents in this match who are not over. And it becomes apparent that, oh yeah, there's no commentary when you're watching live at the arena. You know, they don't pipe in Jeremy Borash going mental or whatever, uh, like they did in TNA house shows. And that, it, it kind of it just gets really quiet here. Uh, splicey. Juice tries to rouse the crowd. Uh, successful enough. Does a bit of road dog punches. Sadly, no bumming. Uh. I know, I know. He does a Joe backsplash instead. Kenny, isolated in the ring, gets the beat down. Hot tag the hangman. And then he's like, dun, 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 dun. When a sad cowboy feels <laughs> bad inside. <laughs> has a cry. You know, um, yeah, great wrestler. Top rope lariat. Couple of near falls. 
couple of lovely crowd shots. Then we get to see how big the stadium is. And I was just, oh, man, well done, AEW. Golden Lovers, tandem alt corners, jump to the outside, Brett's turnbuckle, and moonsault out, both of them. Wonderful, lads. Omega, Ibushi! Oh, Ibushi! Snapdragon, Snapdragon, Poison Rana! No! Two! Four hit combo by the baby faces. And then the camera like ends on Callus, so the crowd go from popping just like, it's great. his heat is phenomenal. One, two, no! Hey, that's a tough kid. <laughs> just kicked out, let me tell you that right now. Okay, Tom. Don Callis just swallowed his tongue. Rocking for the baby faces, and no sides were a pin. One, two, three, and Bullet Club Gold win it. Good match, but nothing amazing. Didn't blow me away. We see a lot of this stuff on a week-to-week basis anyway on Dynamite or Collision. Uh, And the lads are saying, how are you you enjoying AEW? And I said, mostly great, but one complaint is the matches are too good on the weekly TV shows. How ridiculous is that statement? But the company should be selling pay-per-views. I know the TV deal is important, I get that, but... Let's build stories on the t- on TV and let's have a- incredible matches on pay-per-view because just like the match we saw today, it was like, yeah, that was good. It was really good. Fantastic match. And if you're going to judge this match just in a bubble, like if you're going to go through and list the moves, how smooth they were and how proficient they all are, like honestly, yeah, like it probably ended up being like a four-star match. And so if you're a moves guy, yeah, this match was great, you know? But the other stuff that surrounds it, like, the match began cold. I thought half of this match didn't work. Like, not that it didn't work, it's just that the fans didn't care. But by the end of it, like, supreme workers in the match pulled through, and it was excellent. Are you happy with the winners? Yeah, I think it makes sense, you know? Uh, if you're going to build towards Kenny Omega and to Keshida, I think it was the right finish. There was a Page and Takeshita where Page has a buckshot lariat, but Takeshita had his back to him, but it's still bumped in time. It's like, oh, what a great wrestler. He's really you know? good. Yeah, Having to do it without being able to see your wrestler is it's just very impressive. You know? uh, Because good. I can't imagine Hangman is like, I'm coming! Three, two... <laughs> 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 oh, Can you tell me officially who is in the Don Callis family? Because I think it's got one member, Takeshita. Uh, officially is like Will Ospreay is he just like gardening out front is he like I think he's a long lost relative I uh, you know he'll turn up for Christmas dinner <laughs> you know it's that level it's hot but, hot but, though hot uh, hot meal but he doesn't get to eat the same as the rest of the members he gets you know the like Christmas dinner in a can you know <laughs> <laughs> plopped up <laughs> the turkey with all the like the giblets yeah <laughs> the congealed bar- marrow jelly <laughs> he'll have a very shiny coat yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah like I because I, like Takesh I think sleeps in the box room but you know <laughs> in the drawer in the drawer <laughs> like, like when Kramer had the businessmen over <laughs> <sighs> Good night. Good night, Mr. O. Good night. Good night, Mr. Yamaguchi. Where else can I say? Can I make one more point to add yes, on please. to the yeah, last? Yeah, please. So, one of the best tag matches I can remember seeing was on Collision a few weeks ago. Oh, the FTR hour long. FTR Bullet Club Gold, fifty-eight minute match, best two out of three falls. Highly recommend watching it on free TV. Better than anything on the biggest show of all time. Yes. After one of the greatest tag team bouts we've ever seen here in AEW. It's a nice ferry into the next matchup. The tag champions FTR versus the Young Bucks. Good to see you, Cash Wheeler. Is that a Glock in your pocket? Are you just pleased to see me? (laughs) Was that why he was arrested? Yeah, nine days before All In. August 18th, Daniel Cash Wheeler arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a firearm road rage type incident where he flashed his piece. That was July 27th. Arrest warrant July 28th. Showed up to court for a pretrial hearing August 3rd, so he's very compliant. With a plea of not guilty, which was waived. 
arrest warrant filed August 18th and he stupidly got done in for this. Oh, fucking hell, man. He's in Florida and they have an open books policy on everything. Like, it's just as a matter of public record, 911 calls, live streaming, court appearances and that. So it's all on tape. And if you're wondering, that's why we have the kind of running meme of like Florida man does this is because you can see everything that happens on it readily, you know, okay. in Florida. All right. Well, that, that sounds reasonable. 2500 for the bond. All right. Sir. So, yeah, very stupid move, but in general, compliant, forthcoming with the law. So, you know, thumbs up. Thankfully, it didn't affect his Wembley appearance. And the FTR lads just get a big hug on at the start. Eh, it's good to see it. Good stuff, Cash. Not good stuff. Fucking stupid, mate. Don't put Wembley on the line for this. Like, yep. or you save, save it for Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it Dax is the Twitter king? Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I think he's cooled down a bit. Uh, I think cooled off. He's, yeah, he's cooled off. off, brother. Fuck, where's Wardlow? <laughs> he's, he's really cooled <laughs> oh, off. Yeah, he is giving out about the internet. Yeah, Dax, I think since he stopped doing his podcasts, he doesn't have a barrage of people telling him he's an idiot. And so he doesn't tend to give out quite as much now. So yeah, I think stopping that show was the best thing that he could have done. It caused nothing but trouble. I know we were never getting it, but I'm sad it wasn't CMFTR versus the elite. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's what I want. Like. One day. <clears throat> one day. Yeah. No, I'll just have my own show. <laughs> I'm coming back, but I'm going to be the king of Saturdays. <laughs> Jesus, like, your big baby. <laughs> it's co- it's going to happen. Fucking, it's going to happen. Just fucking get it. You're wrestlers, right? You're carny wrestlers. Just have a fucking scrap, talk it out, have a beer and a Pepsi, and go about your business. I'm really sad about that, just in general, that the hottest storyline, you know, when we last covered AEW, it was for All Out. Brawl Out. Brawl Out. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was All Out with CM Punk leaving in a blaze of sour grapes. And you were like, oh my God, this is going to be the biggest thing. Whenever he comes back, Tony puts up the money, do a wonderful pay-per-view buy rate for CM Punk and the Elite. And I was just like, they're never going to talk about it. And in fact, he's coming back, but they're going to be on a completely separate show. The biggest storyline coming out of wrestling in years, wet fart. And we can't even talk. Oh, it's fucking shit, man. The yeah. fact that it was never dealt with, I believe that if they just had a booked an angle and worked with each other, I think they would have worked through the hard feelings and this would have been old history by now. Punk? With Punk? I don't know. I think he needs a lot of time to get over whatever it is that he's upset about. But I think he will. So let's hope for uh, a brighter future. Do you think like when he comes back home, you know, like AJ Lee just gets it. He, you know, he yeah. just vents at her for like four hours until it's like, okay, it's past 12. We need to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, he's, she's getting ranted at on a daily basis. She, she's a saint. So Jay went off to buy food and also steal coke from the High Rise Palace. Does it taste any better? Um, Free coke. It was pretty great. It was the ultimate crumbs off the table business. It was like, because I said, "Oh, I must get a drink." He's like, "Do you want to? Do you want me to get you a free coke?" He's like. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Thank you, sir. Off he went. He, it what, was. What day is today? Who <laughs> knows? It's Christmas Day. <laughs> It was like, you know, he was throwing the coins out of his balcony and the we were all scrambling around <laughs> trying to pick them up, you know? It was me trying to throw it at your head, like... <laughs> big silver dollar, boof! <laughs> <laughs> uh, did I, uh, you, you got some cookies out of it, right? Did you try I any of those cookies? I got half a cookie. I liked okay. it. Okay. Steve, did you like any spots in this match? This match was awesome, but I don't really remember any particular spots. I think that's like the the like curse of watching a big show live. My eyes are darting to the ring, and then maybe the angle is not great, and so then you look up at the big screen, but then you miss the actual spot. But the general feeling of the match was like amazing, you know what I mean? I thought, and this is going to be a recurring theme, it was amazing, and they have great chemistry. 
But I'm pretty sure we will see this match on Dynamite or Collision even at some point and it'll be just as good. But yes, it was incredible. And a big part of that was the crowd. So they can always, these four lads put on an amazing match, but they were elevated by the crowd. But yes, it was amazing. Is this because they go, I agree with you. Um, is, Is this because they have that kind of X7 booking where you do your finisher, I'll kick out and you have to do a super finisher and you do your finisher and I'll kick out and uh, kick out, kick out, near fall, near fall, near fall, near fall, near fall, and then there's a match and then it ends. But every match is like that. So you do, it is quite tiring as well. Regular matches don't exist in AEW. It's all this kind of high octane, crazy X7 booking. Is that fair enough? Yeah. I agree. I think on rewatch, I'd be a bit more positive than you guys. I think FTR and the Bucks are the two best tag teams in the business. I don't think anyone can really touch them for their in-ring wrestling. And I thought that they went out there and they absolutely smashed it. Oh. Um, just a couple of things I did like. FTR have Union Jacks fill on their logo on their arses. I thought that was a nice touch. And they had lovely Bray, Brody and Jay Briscoe RIP armbands. That was good. Lovely, wonderful show of respect. Uh, Matt Jackson does a Brett's Rope elbow off of Brett's Rope. Obviously SummerSlam 92 in Wembley. But it's not that great at it. I wish Dax did it because he's way better. Speaking of, Dax attempts a Brett's Sharpshooter on Nick. Doesn't get it. Tries it on Matt and does. And Cash gets one too. Lovely, but pay homage to Brett's partner Anvil as well. Like just bring a big bag of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and a KKK hoodie. Yeah, and a hoodie, yeah. The only other thing is that I find with AEW, like this is symptomatic kind of modern wrestling, is that there's so many amazing spots, but my favourite spot of the match isn't the finish. And I'm kind of deflated when the finish comes then because there's an amazing spot here where Nick gets taken out with a suicide dive and then the FTR do a BTE trigger and smooch the mat and then hit a shatter machine. They should have won with that. Yeah. But then they just have to do a second shatter machine and win with that. So I was like, hmm, yeah. Do you know I actually what I mean? do think that's a common issue with modern wrestling where the goal always seems to be that you've got to top what you did previously. And so in your head, you're like, well, we did this spot and this spot and this spot. So this time we have, we have to do this, this, this and that. And it's like, but it peaked at this and you didn't need that, you know? Mm. And so, yeah, um, basically read the crowd and then base your match base off of that. When you peak, it's time to end it. I love that idea, actually, Steve, that, okay, we're going to do Shatter Machine kick out. We're going to do BT Trigger kick out. No, no, no. Actually... Like, let's call it in the ring, Brian Alvarez style. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. 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 We're all out of time. We're so bad. Just like Brian Alvarez. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. They retained the titles. They earned the titles, but they did not earn the respect of the Young Bucks. Stadium Stampede. Eddie Kingston, Best Friends, Orange Cassidy and Penta El Zero... El Zero... El Zero... Zero... Penta. And (laughs) Cassidy (laughs) and Penta... Versus John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, Claudio Castagnoli, Santana, and Ortiz. So it's Fanta Twist versus the BBBCs. The extra B is for BYOBB. <laughs> 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 you know, and then Mox comes out to. Wild thing. Yes, and not ripping a blunt on the way to the ring. Uh, he was in a, that music video. That's right, when he's like going, is he jogging or yeah, something? Yeah. Uh, and then Yogging, he goes and he has a big, dirty toke of a spliff. Yeah. Nice. And it made yeah. it into a music video. There we go, bit of splice. When it comes to Mox's entrance music, I really miss his old song. And I always felt that Wild Thing is only wild in name. And I didn't think it was wild enough for Mox. But now, having seen it live, I get it. Yeah. Can you explain it to me then? Like, it just works. It gets the crowd singing along. It gets the crowd hyped up. Like it's a it's a lovely song. It's still not 
I'm gonna jam these forks into my forehead. You know? <laughs> I wanna love for <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, come on. I'm Skew not having words. it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I am a knacker. <laughs> we have to oh. go against you and whoever you can find in the stadium stampede back. What? Oh, oh. Uh, who is the build to stadium stampede? Oh, it was like one week, maybe yeah. two were built. Nah. Yeah. Nah. yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. They couldn't do it because Eddie Kingston was off in the G1, so he only came back for the Go Home Show, which is where they announced Stadium Stampede. But basically, so here's, here's zero 10 bucks. lads that have nothing to do for the weekend. Put them in the match. Yeah. Now, at this point, I, I was knee-deep in Perry Perry. so <laughs> what's... Uh... Oh, best of luck, anyone calling this... Yeah, it was mostly in the ring on the ramp and a bit around, you know, just like around ringside. Like, I kind of blame Wembley for this, for not having a pool. Because, like, <laughs> my favourite uh, stadium stampede spot is Matt Hardy getting a dip into the pool. And then he gets dunked and it's like a rejuvenation pool for him. So he'd go down, come up, we wanna go down and up. But Hardy was, you know, go down and go up, wonderful. I was like, ah! Oh my god, this is dull booking, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? The, 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 yeah, the way, just bring on the bouncy castle, you know? Uh, and like, waterlogged cameras, please. <laughs> on the Gatorade pass! <laughs> you gotta have a Gatorade pass. Absolutely, celebrate this damn thing. Um, In my opinion, this wasn't a stadium stampede match because that was a very specific thing that was shot during COVID and it was edited and it was funny and clever. And it was in different, strewn around different sections. Yeah. To me, uh, this was anarchy in the arena, which we literally only had about two or three months ago. And I thought that that match was better. I really would have loved to see Mox in a singles match that didn't involve instant I'm going to grab a fork and jam it into your head but you could tell that he couldn't wait yes yeah yes. like he didn't even build up to the spot it was like ding 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 get the fucking skewers <laughs> yeah oh my god oh my god I've seen everything now Wembley Stadium oh has god. never seen anything quite like Oh, I was queuing for merch at the time. I thought it was a shorter line. And I was like, okay, yeah, 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 sure. I'll get the football jersey one and probably the London and red kind of old timey thing. I thought Kim would like him. When I was in the queue, I was like, I don't see the football jersey on the wall. That's probably not great. But sure, they have the other one. And I was literally two people from the front, 20 minutes later or whatever. And uh, the guy takes it down off the wall. The, the other one, I was like, what do you have? Oh, generic AEW top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AW hoodie that's it's like, 70 pounds yeah. uh, it's a literal meme that AEW have an issue that they never bring enough merch and well, it's not a meme it's just the fucking truth you know overstock overstock your shit it's like if you don't sell it so what ship it back you know what I mean or put it in a warehouse until next fucking year you know you've got a captive audience that are willing to spend 60 fucking pounds on a piece of cotton yeah. Wow. Truck it in. Yeah. I think the fans know. Yes. Sue! So what spots do we have here? The car spot. Sue! It's Trent's ma. Hey. Uh, so she's been featured multiple times on AW over the years. Uh, that would get him to the ring faster. She does have a gimmick where she drops her son off to work. And it's adorable, and she's super over, yeah. and I marked out. Um, by the way, if you had asked me 10 years ago when I started talking about Trent Beretta, if I would be watching him live in Wembley on the winning side <laughs> in a featured match, I wouldn't believe you. you. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Insane. So I was tweeting out like the odd thought and the amount of replies to it that are like, please tell me how angry OOC is that Trent is wrestling at Wembley. <laughs> like He's proven me wrong. Yeah. He's a featured talent. Yeah. Yuta in the middle. You've got to give the people what they want. The stadium stampede. There's a huge gap between the ground, uh, the floor seats and the tiered seating. Mm. And... I was like, this is perfect. We're going to have a great view of the wrestlers brawling in front of us. No, we saw nothing. 
bit of brawling at the back, which we saw on the screen, and a bit of brawling in the ring, which we saw on the screen, and um, that was it. Yep. Something I did quite like, uh, Orange Cassidy, he, you know, started putting extra tape on his hand, taping it up, and then he goes spelunking for a glass. He just, yeah. you know, with the bucket. <laughs> Kickboxer. Or yes. Or Hot Shots Part 2. Yes. I was hoping he'd come out with, like, gummy bears on ah, it, you yeah. know? <laughs> oh, which is brilliant. Yeah. Oh, my God. Here he comes. Eddie comes out with his cookie sheet to huge Eddie chance. Oh, I, I didn't see that. Um, he sorry. He, Eddie waddles to the ring with his cookie sheet, gut busting out his uh, <laughs> huge onesie, his ill-fitting trousers, <laughs> muffing toffee out of his onesie, with his unlaced boots <laughs> flapping in the wind. <laughs> I love Eddie Kingston. But I think he's such a funny guy. Great talent. Uh, not not Mick Foley level dresser though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> the juice won't be uh, the other juice won't be denied ah! and picks up the win denying the BBC holy smokes he won it the team of Eddie Kingston and like actually my favourite bit I loved Eddie Kingston because he was through a table and Mox is through a lot and bleh so um, they're kind of kind of lying close to each other and they're in the same shot and Eddie just flips him off that was great <laughs> Loved it. Kingston says he's number one. Oh, God. Watching it back there. Stadium Stampede. It's a terrible spectator match. It's like... You don't know what you're looking at. Unless you happen to be seated in a very specific area with a good view, this is the worst live wrestling experience I think I've ever had watching a match. And then when I went back and watched it again, I was like, it's a bit better. Still the worst thing on the show by Miles. Oh. Did not like this match. Oh. It's I, it's I, not my type of wrestling. I surprisingly really liked it on the watch back. Yeah. I did, because I could see what was happening. And I know it was, you know, a lot of the bullshit hardcore stuff, but I really, really liked the last kind of five Actually, minutes exactly written down uh, with Orange Cassidy and, and Mox and Eddie Kingston in the ring. That stuff was really good and built really well into the next pay-per-view, which was seven days later. Mm. Yeah. When on rewatch there, I was just looking at it. I was like, plunder, 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 cat. <laughs> oh! <laughs> a, a fun plunder match. My negatives is it featured knackery spots I don't like. Like going to town on someone with a fork, just... <clears throat> I hate it. And we didn't need like four of the lads in the match. Yeah. Um, oh, and also... Penta Oscuro, not Penta Negro, like I called him after the show. I couldn't think of the name. I was like, Penta Negro. It's or something. Sin Cara Negro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cara Negro. Negro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But positives popped huge for the barbecue skewer hair of Mox, even if he did it recently enough. Penta, you know, he botched it, but he recovered quite quickly for the latter spot. and Which they almost botched, which I didn't know after watching it live, that the ladder broke and then your man had to literally hold the mm. fucking ladder in spot. I was like, bring two, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Have one less rocket. <laughs> and by the second, send Sue and Trent down to B&Q, mate. You know? I think the fans know. Yes. It's Sue! We're all four fighting for one title. These are four of the best wrestlers in all of professional wrestling. It's for the AEW Women's World Championship. Hikaru Shida, the champion, versus Tony Storm, versus Soraya, versus Britt Baker. V1, how does Carolina feel about Tony Storm's new gimmick? Don't think she's seen the gimmick. She's. I've told her about it, and she's looking forward to seeing how it fits in and how it will affect her enjoyment of Tony's arse because my wife has a massive girl crush on Tony Storm she's like I'm a very heterosexual lady except for when it comes to Tony Storm uh, she's right she's dead right for the first and possibly only time in Carolina's life she is spot on my friend <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously I'm she, joking she's in those wall colours mm, I don't know I don't know Sonic Yellow <laughs> chin up Tits out and watch for the shoe. <laughs> oh, come on! Who throws a shoe? Honestly.
Um, oh, did you know Soraya, aka Paige here, yeah, was on Good Morning Britain on Thursday? Uh, it's complete PR, everything's great, come see the show, but a couple of notes for you. Uh, she is beside comedian actor Jack Whitehall. He's really bad. Uh, I was like, what do you have to do with AEW or Soraya? Like, the first time they're meeting is right now on Good Morning Britain. It was like, are you just a smelly wrestling fan? I was like, no. He actually did PR for AEW like four years ago, hawking the Eliminators tournament, and was on telly doing a Roman wrestler gimmick, Maximum by Curious. It was actually funny. Here's a bit of Splicey. Ready, big man? (laughs) (laughs) Boris? Uh, before we start, do you have a safe word? <laughs> Paige Ha puts over Florence Pugh, the Fighting With My Family actress, and she was great in Oppenheimer, both of her, you know. Um, but the big question, it's Britain, and there's an old lad host talking about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so he brings up Big Daddy. Oh, God. Cheaper. Giant. <laughs> <laughs> Giant haystacks. <laughs> Four minutes it took him, <laughs> which is pretty good. It's cool. actually much longer than yeah. I thought it would be. Uh, okay, that's all I have on that. You're not old enough, but do you remember Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks? Oh, Did you go that far? I'm oh. not that... Uh, we all remember Big Daddy. I remember, 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 remember right. that. Streaming for Big Daddy to, to do more. How is the like, build to this been going? Tony Storm, she's been very much a highlight. Doing her thing with Ruby Soho and Soraya, they're very much on top of the women's division. Sheeta basically came out of nowhere to say, I want to win back my women's title. Then they had a little tournament to get the four women into the match, with Sheeta getting a bye because she was already the champion. Um, I thought it was so stupid. Why would you put the champion who has to qualify? I think Tony got Tony a buy. Tony got a buy. Yeah. Yeah, the ex champion got a buy, but the champion had to qualify for her own match. She should have lost that match so she wouldn't have to, <laughs> you know, face the other three women for her title. <laughs> it's a three way, but there's no title on the line because the yeah. champion can't be in the match. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Russo was like taking notes here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's not a lot to say about this. Yeah. Man started slow, but he finished strong. I haven't wrestled in the UK in nine years, so I do feel like I have a lot of pressure. Question, where does this match... Obviously, Soraya is the hometown girl coming back. First big, like, singles match pay-per-view in, what? Seven, eight years, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, Guaranteed huge pop. And she lives two and a half hours away in, you know, naughty Norwich, you know. Home of Alan Partridge. Yeah. Uh, why would she go to London? You'll either be mugged or not appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah, she'd only won the belt earlier this month, and I was like, oh man, you're just gonna freaking lose it. That's sorry, mate. And she brought the family. Uh, how do you rate Paige's entrance reaction? Uh, I think it was mostly positive, but I wouldn't say she got a massive hometown pop by any means. I think the issue is that she's been booked as a heel for the last year, and she's been the uh, top heel in the division. The build is all about booing her, but the hometown crowd didn't want to boo her, but she's not going to get a crazy reaction because she is a heel. And she actually talked about it in the presser, she thought that she was going to get booed out of the building. It was a weird, like, she did get a pop, but it wasn't insane. I did pop for seeing her family, the whole real crew from fighting with my family, uh, including the Zack attack. The brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I was Tony Khan, I'd be way too spiteful to be paying massive money for to play a Queen song. I don't care. How much, Steve, you were saying, how much approximately would that cost? I thought, like, like music rights are really expensive. I know that... He didn't get Danielson's uh, final countdown for ages because Europe are notorious and they want massive money. But when he did finally get it at Forbidden Door, he did say, it's like, I won't tell you how much it costs, but I will say that it was six figures. It's disgusting. Oh my God, that's insane. And I don't think Queen come cheap. Tony Storm comes out to God Save the Queen, which I thought was fun. Gets a round of applause. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, woo, gets a cheer. And also the nicest pyro. 
it's all quite color coded like orange cassidy got orange pyro uh she got ones that go up and ones that go across the uh the slit in the uh the stadium um <laughs> she did mostly polite clapping um but <laughs> two two pyro entrances stadium is now cloudy when the match starts <laughs> All you hear is the crickets coughing in the background. (laughs) Who'll pin DMD spot with Paige and Tony? Proper panto, everyone, like Rosie, can see what they're doing. I was just watching it and I was like, oh, wrestling is great. You know, you don't need to hear what they're saying. You don't need the commentators. You can know exactly what they're doing. And it was like, it breaks kayfabe because like Brit was on her back for about 40 seconds there. Tony jawjacking with Paige's ma and just knocks her on her ass. (laughs) It was great. Man, and then the whole caravan gets up in arms. Page with Bull Nakano's Bulls Angelito. And then we get a curb stop by Brit. Only gets a two. DMD really wants a Rings of Saturn, like mandible claw combo, which is called... Lockjaw. Yeah, Man. well done. But Sheeta is not having it. Tony and Soraya get in the ring. Hey, let's do a spot. Uh, Soraya hits the rampage and kablamo! Hometown girl does good. Oh my God. I was like, mm, yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. And she wasn't in command of the match. I'm happy for her, but it was more when she just, her emotions kind of came out and she started crying in the ring. Oh, that was really nice. Yeah, it was perfectly adequate. I think I'm a bit more positive on this match than you guys. I liked this match. I definitely enjoy that they're finally breaking up the outcasts because I think that's a group that haven't worked. I think it's been a bit lame with the paint and all that Can stuff. Can you tell us about this gimmick? Uh, the, their gimmick was back at your pow pow. We're <laughs> we're we're heels. We're gonna beat up the baby faces and we're gonna spray paint them green. It it's like nineties wrestle bollocks, and I think it was a bit lame. I do have an issue with the booking. So they turned Tony on Soraya, but they also took the belt off of Tony a few weeks ago, and I think that the angle and the feud leading out of it would make more sense if. Soraya beat Tony to take the belt off her, and then she has more reasons to want to fight. Basically, there was no need to put the belt on Sheeta for a few weeks. It added nothing, and in my opinion, it actually hurt her. The first person to be a two-time women's champion meant absolutely nothing. Okay, I thought there was a punchline coming her. I don't think Steve cares at no? this point. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, nobody cares at 3.55 in the no- at night. <laughs> it's 4 a.m. You will accept it <laughs> congratulations Soraya her first reign as AEW Women's World Champion begins in Wembley Stadium I'm gonna throw your ass in the coffin it's gonna be all over Next up is a coffin match. Darby Allen and Sting versus Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage. And I was like, oh, no, Keith Lee. <laughs> Jungle Boy's heel turn, so he's moved on from Christian. And we're just, in general, kind of en route to Luchasaurus versus Darby. I love one of the highlights of the show for me was Sting's little, like, 10 second promo before the match. Uh, you know, he's doing his Joker Sting gimmick. And Darby said, "Is a time," and he did like a bit of a like a Cockney accent. And the the upshot was, he said, "It's not time; it's show time." I said, "Oh, this can can you do that in a Cockney accent, please?" It's not time; it's show time. That's all right, isn't it? It's Christmas time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cockney accent from the like 18th yeah. century. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Sting's great. Yeah, you know, everyone knows Sting's great. I just want to put over Tony Schiavone. Him going mental and enthusiastic for Sting, like, for the last 20 years, you know, from WCW days. 
really makes Sting seem bigger and more timeless and more legendary. You know, great stuff. Yeah. You know, well done, Tony. Oh, who's Russo's favorite wrestler? Swerve. Hey, oh, terrible, terrible. That's the kind <laughs> yeah, of joke really you expect at half yeah. four in the morning. Whose house? Swerve's, Swerve's house. house. I love how Tony bought TNA's Christian Cage music. Do you think six figures? I mean, six action figures. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you, whatever it is, not as much as fucking Seek and Destroy by Metallica. Oh my God, that, that was a great Brucey bonus moment on this show. People marked out. I flipped my shit. Sting used to use that at the dying days of WCW. They still had enough to spring for Metallica. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have been world tag team. Well, I can definitely say this. It's Sting! Amazing entrance just taking it in because a lot of people had their lights on as well. They do their huge entrance and they soak it in. And I'm just thinking like Christian and Swerver just like arms folded. This is bollocks. This is bollocks, lads. <laughs> We're going to lose this match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, question. Does Sting take off his tee? He does not. He actually adds to his clothes. Do- doesn't he put on Darby's hoodie at one point? I think so. Yeah. 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 So he goes beyond a t-shirt, Jay. What was insulting about it was, obviously, he's selling his merch, his red Scorpion t-shirt, but... Which was not available at the show. Of course not. (laughs) That's because they brought eight of them. (laughs) (laughs) But to me, it's even more insulting to not even try and blend your t-shirt into your clothes. Yeah, red pants, please. Yes. Like, Ric Flair has been wearing a t-shirt now for, I don't know, 15 years. Sting is on and off with the t-shirt, so he can get in shape. It's just a shame for the biggest show ever he didn't, but, you know, we love Sting. Yeah. I don't even know if he had his beak out. Yeah. He could have been running wild and free. <laughs> we wouldn't know. <laughs> and and speaking of attire, is Christian nappyless these days? I think so. I think he's wrestling in slacks and a tactical turtleneck. Yeah. I think he took the bump pad out and turned it into the turtleneck, you know, the insides oh, of it. Oh, yes. yeah. That yeah. makes perfect kayfabe sense. Yes. It's the only thing that makes sense. There is some chant that starts off and I was like, oh, oh, TNA, TNA, T, T. Oh, no, no. Damn, damn. <laughs> was it a TNA chant? Yes. Yes, was it? There was, it was a, a TNA, TNA chant. Oh, thank God. Yeah. I'm not going crazy. Yeah. Sting kind of wobbles, <laughs> wobbles and hobbles around. <laughs> and like Swerve is like, I will deflect attention with a spear. And Christian follows up with his spear. So Darby is face down on the mat. And then Christian is kind of at his head, kneeling down. And he's like rummaging. And he's like, is he going to slap him on the bum? It feels like they're spanking. Hmm. It's hurtling into the show. <laughs> a little slappy bum bum. <laughs> it was not. It was he sequestered him. He tied him up and put one hand behind his back. To a kind of a mild handcuff. But that doesn't stop Darby. Moonsault of Brett's rope. And he jumps to the outside as well. All with one arm tied behind his back. Two perfect spots. Well done, mate. Look at this. And the cannonball on Swerve with his hands restrained. Christian one man concerto denied sting off the apron doesn't crash the table chance of one more time echo throughout Wembley stinger duly obliges with a big leg drop and perfect crash big cheer and you still got it you still you still got it you still you got it you got it you got it coffin drop to the outside on swerve on a coffin missed but Darby perfectly landed on the coffin. He's a madman. He's mental. But if there's ever a time that you can do something crazy like that, it's at a show of this size. Here we go! Oh my god! Swerve hot dogs with the bat and goes around to the coffin with Sting in it to close it. And he pushes the casket closed. The ref says, no, no, it's still open. And then we look, we get a shot where the bat is keeping the coffin open. Amazing. Awesome. 450 Sting on the coffin? No, no, and the Sting doesn't do a 450 on the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> no, Stinger death drop on the dented coffin. But Swerve sacrifices his fingers to keep in the match. Darby does a really nasty spot to finish. Remember this one? 
another fucking coffin drop again, wasn't it? Mm. And that secures the win. Close the coffin and James Hetfield play us out. All right. Uh, <laughs> after fucking loot there. We're sandwiched between the lid of the car. <laughs> What you, do you think? Technically, that match hasn't been won. It isn't over because Swerve's hair was draped outside the coffin. When, Love it. When the lid was, I'm not going to say closed, but closed over. So how do you make the distinction between fingers, a bat, and somebody's hair? So technically, the match hasn't been won. And I expect this to be addressed on mm. Dynamite next week. That's brilliant. Yes. Well, unfortunately, Steve did not brought it up. The referee's decision is final. Yeah. Until it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but the match was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, this match was excellent. Uh, I think Swerve is a mega star waiting to happen. I think he's got it all. Total package? Total package. You took a back seat to the elite so they can ride <laughs> driver and you can sit in the back because you've gotten comfortable. If I would have got the opportunities that you've gotten a year ago, I'd be the first black AEW world champion by now. I know Jungle Boy, he looked at me like a father figure. He sure did. But here's the thing, Jungle Boy. I never wanted to be your father. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father. But your father's dead. Dead, 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 dead. dead. But your father's dead. Dead, dead. How over slash amazing is Christian in AEW right now. He's amazing. He's brilliant. I think he's got the most fun gimmick out of all the heels in the company now. Like this gimmick of zeroing in on (laughs) male wrestlers whose fathers have passed away. And it's brilliant. And then like (laughs) he cut a promo on Nick Wayne next week. And he he was like, you know, I brought up your dad before. I just want to say I'm sorry. Sorry that I didn't say he's even <laughs> worse than I thought. And he goes, oh, by the way, I saw your mom there in the front row. Uh, I might slide into her DMs later. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this guy is brilliant. Nick Wayne. Do you know who his dad is? Buddy Wayne. As in the infamous Brian Alvarez versus <laughs> Buddy Wayne. No. Stop. 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 It was, it was so out of sync that there was nearly a rhythm. <laughs> Amazing. It um, comes full circle. It does. It does. Whose house? Wait, it's Sting! Whose house? Steve, what's the shtick about Joker Sting coming back? He just did a promo on the Go Home Impact where he, he had the <laughs> Joker makeup and he had Prince Nana held captive. Hey, hey, hey. And he basically said, Goodbye. Hey, uh, uh, Joker Sting coming back and I'm going to be wrestling in Wembley in nine days. And then Prince Nana, who was being held captured, had to go, eh, it's actually 11. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Brilliant. Uh, I did like how he just let him leave then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was kind of him. Yeah. Yeah, Joker saying, obviously, it's a old TNA gimmick from the Hogan Bischoff era. It was a shame because he got beaten up and then he just wore the Joker makeup. But it was like, could you not have gotten the lads to smear your makeup and then that's why you're wearing it? So, you know, make sense of it? Not, oh, I just saw The Dark Knight. It was great, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> Whatever, four oh, years later. Money to be made in that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Awesome, but hopefully his crow will come back as well. <laughs> I I really like the, the Joker thing. I just wish in TNA back then he toned it down ever so slightly. Like he has done in AEW. I think this is the right level. Where he is now, don't go any sillier than this. Yeah. yeah. Really enjoying it. TNA was like 1960s Joker thing. Yeah. And now he's kind of like, you know, naughty's Joker thing. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Which is yeah. definitely yeah. better. It works a bit better. Hmm. Yeah, they just peck, 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 peck away at you. Okay, the main event, the real main event, the man who will sing and dance. A sing and dance man in front of 80,000 paying people. Give us a fuzzy update. Hosey, what did you think? Amazingly, I never thought I'd say this, fuzzy provided my best moment in the biggest wrestling show of all time. 
this entrance. He did a great job and they did a great job, but it was the crowd, as much as I hate them, were brilliant for this entrance. Yeah. Did you like Chris Jericho, the flattest singer in all of the land, trying to be Freddie Mercury, one of the all-time greatest singers in the history of singers? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Was that what he was doing? Yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah. that's the attempt. Yeah, ah, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Hilarious. But so look, how many look. times have you paid to see Chris Jericho now? Fuzzy, you mean? Yeah. This will be my third paid time to see Fuzzy. There you that's go. hilarious. Someone tweeted at me. Says there's only three constants in this world: there's death, taxes, and the OSW boys finding a way to pay to see Fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> Great, well done, sir. Brilliant. I think this is number five for me, unfortunately. Where? I think it's five for me as well. Because yeah. the fourth time I didn't go because I was in England at the time. So I, not forced, Joey willingly went. I, d- I did look over to you during, I was very, what is what is Ook doing during Fozzie? Is there mm. arms folded? Is there nodding? Is there just, dis- what's the scowl situation? Mm. Like? And you were enjoying it, I think. Yes, it was the it most was. animated I've seen you. It was fucking amazing. I'm worried we won't get fuzzy three man main event. I don't think we're gonna and get it and a fucking no I, scrum. I don't think we will. Like, what do you, what do you want to do? Like, I, we just keep going until we can keep going. You, you know, wanna, do presser. You just, Let's okay. do the presser now. If you, okay, you want to do presser? Okay, like, well, okay. actually, I'm actually genuinely interested. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a good idea. Let's get ready. New Japan Strong Champion. Hey, everybody. Man, it was like just a, like a classroom. Yeah, like seats. a lecture theater, lecture you know, theater, like tier, yeah, yeah. tiered seating, little podium, you know, with like a table. Tony sat in the middle and then seats on either side. And AEW do the gimmick where they have people come in by themselves so that each wrestler can get X amount of time and a few questions rather than having everyone sitting there at the same time and no one caring about Orange Cassidy and just people only talking to like Max, you know what I mean? So yeah, everyone got their time, which is really nice. But like, hang on, hang on, we have to pause for like 40 minutes before Tony comes out. We were ushered down there at 10 o'clock on the dot and and yeah, he rocks in just full of beans at like 20 to 11. Because my thought just went straight to, oh my God, is he shouting at Punk and Jack Perry to get their shit together? Is something going down that we haven't heard yet? No, he was just I, having a laugh, yeah. basically. So where were you sitting in this? Did you like skulk down the back, you know, grade A students in the front or, you know, mediocre in the middle? Absolute creamy middle. Right. Just before it started, this lady wearing a blue top and carrying a sign walks up and sits next to us. And I was like, Jay, you know who that is. That's Max's ma Mm. sitting down there. Whenever she turned over her sign and it's like a picture of her and Max. Like my baby or something, was it? She's absolutely lovely. She's like the most American woman Mm. (laughs) as well. Yeah, she's fantastic. very yeah. funny very yeah, she's sweet super nice lovely yeah, lady yeah, yeah. you can see so where proud. Max gets yeah, it yeah. from she was great she was funny so you know I want to know where was Alvarez and, and uh, Meltzer sitting just out of interest they would have been one row in front of us on the very edge okay so I was thinking Clo- you know, closer up to the front end, no. center I thought no no the class geeks were Sean Ross Sapp Denise Alzado was in the front some English dude who like he was like Addy from back in college you know oh me me question question yeah. this fucker got to ask like eight fucking questions you know yeah. what I mean yeah why I are you so great that was right. probably okay. it for like the front you know directly in front of us were the cultaholic lads yeah. uh, super awesome guys super yeah, nice really, guys really nice yeah. we, we had them in stitches laughing and like they turned around and goes like are you guys gonna be here to like actually ask questions or are you just here to rip the piss and we're like Call you may, call you be, you know? We're polite. Yeah, we're, polite. Yeah. we're used to whispering while people are talking. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. This is wild. The 40 we were minute goal. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's fair game. Yeah. Ollie from Wrestle Talk was like maybe three rows in front of us as well. Right. And Jay sculled him over with a 
crumpled up <laughs> for just for a dollar. I you was just like, threw it at him. Yeah, I just threw it at him. It was yeah, like a, do that. Per- a perfect shot. I was like, thank God it wasn't me, because I'm like fucking bandy arm and yeah. I'd sc- <laughs> and I'd skull Tony right between the eyes or something, you know? But yeah, it was a per- it was a perfect assault. shot he got. That is assault. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, At this point, did you have questions in your head? You're like, yes, I'm definitely. Uh, and did you discuss it between yourselves? You asked that, and I'll ask that. Blah blah blah. Uh, or Jay, Jay uh, you you had a question. Well, I I was thinking I should ask something, wanted. mostly because we are here, and I imagine some of our fans are watching the scrum, so I should say something to let people know we're here. But I was like, all of my questions are stupid questions, I like know, jokey it's, questions. It's you know? a once in a lifetime opportunity. I really I hope like, you asked a question. Geez, how, how much did you talk to Lars? What did you talk him down to? Can you haggle with Lars Ulrich? Yeah. Or, you know, do you know what I mean? Or like, how do you choose who gets the ballyhoo? Do you know? Like, yeah. I had no serious questions because he goes into work mode as well. And it, cause Tony? He, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he yeah. has a lot of announcements he wants, like business here, you are like the reporters, go tell people. Announcements yeah. Al- yeah. also, you know. We're so going to tell you, Penta and Orange Cassidy are having a belt match on Dynamite. Yeah. So no question from Cultaholic or WrestleTalk? The Cultaholic guys got, I think, one question. And I think WrestleTalk got one question as well. Mm. Oh, Ollie, Ollie, like, because MJF's ma was like... Ask him if he loves his man. <laughs> oh yeah, or so his mom. that was yeah. and that question. was Ollie's question. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I could have got in there. Ollie like burned it for making a joke, which yeah. was a bit of crack. Yeah. Y- you know. Um, I have to say, MJF, holy shit! The second he comes through, he's working and he's joking and he's charismatic and he's captivating. This level of performance for a shitty post-match scrum where everyone's just happy and, uh, you know, this is the biggest AW show and this is the most amount of people paid in for any wrestling show ever, you know? Just blown away by his charisma. He's always on. Even when other people are talking, he'll be mugging and, like, uh, jostling and working his neck and stuff like that. So, holy shit. He was what exceptional. A, what a great guy. Yeah. My He goodness. was brilliant. He's got a filthy mouth. My goodness. This man can't go more than three words without saying fuck. I said, I love you, buddy, but uh, daddy needs a break. I'm going to go to Paris. I'm going to bang some rats. I'm going to go gorilla in Paris. I'm going to have me a baguette, some Dom Perignon, and I'm going to eat some fucking snails or whatever the fuck they do over there, and I'm just going to chill. Escargo. Thank you, pal. Steve, um, tell me this. Did you get to talk to Alvarez? No, we were going to ambush both of them after the scrum ended. I started reading the Zoom mm. and the mm. wires and stuff. But they left early. Yeah, yeah they, they they left after Callus. So Callus was the last of the talent that was up. Uh, and then Tony answered questions for 20 minutes. But because he talked so much, it ended up only being like four, maybe. So, so yeah, they left there. Mm. And he, yeah, geez, Tony went the distance there. And he, like... After all the wrestlers had gone, he was still talking for 20 minutes. I was like, oh, there is a stream on and we're at it. I should ask something. I should get in there before the yeah. Germany guy is like, are you coming to Germany? So I asked him. Asked, well, you did I, ask a question. I, yeah, I asked Tony a question. Oh, thank God. And it was the best question of the entire presser. Because I was like, I'd like to ask a question that I'd actually like to know the answer to, which is, OK, Tony, you know, congratulations on tonight and in AEW in general. You're a long-time wrestling fan, very enthusiastic. But wrestling is full of snake oil salesmen. You've done really well in the wrestling business, but how do you protect yourself from the business? Hmm. And I thought he would, like, be more jovial or turn it into something, but he actually kind of stopped, thought about it and gave me a serious answer, hmm. which I wasn't expecting. And I was like, oh, I thought you were going to have a bit of a laugh with it or just say, oh, yeah, I surround myself with punk. And, <laughs> and, and Larry the dog, you know, and there's no snakes here. You know? <laughs> Surround myself with punk. <laughs> uh, it was a long enough answer. Like he was saying that uh, when I started out, a load of people were offering to help him go on this ride, but he's quite like a successful businessman and he does stuff with Fulham and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he has been watching wrestling since the 90s. So he went with like his gut and what he thought plus his business acumen. Right. And um, I don't get everything right, but hopefully more more right than wrong. 
Okay, there very, you go. very good. Um, can we get God, a I think I asked him, uh, of you asking the question? Yeah, yeah, I think I asked him, hey, Tony, how's, what's the crack? <laughs> he did, he did. And every Irish person who was there laughed. Right. He was like, ha, what's the crack? Yeah. Because it was like, I was going to ask him, how's the form? But like, even Irish people don't know what I mean when I say that. But I think what's the crack is a bit more global, you know? Yeah, and it has, it's yeah. the question with, there is no answer to that question. It, it, yeah, yeah. I don't well, know. no, the answer is the Crack is ninety. Yeah, yeah. I'll do, uh, that next time. I'll, I'll start okay. performing them. But I, pr- I was worried there that you two wouldn't have asked the question. So I'm proud. Mm. I'm proud of you, Jay. You, Jay Hunter, proud. for asking a question. Proud. 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 <laughs> proud. proud. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> Hi, Tony. What's the crack with you? Hey. Um, Jay Hunter, OSW Review here. Um, first of all, congratulations on all your success. Not just tonight, it's an incredible night. And just in with AEW in general. Now, you have such an infectious enthusiasm for pro wrestling. Like, you go back, way back with the ECW arena and the Jericho signs and that. But I was just wondering, like, wrestling is full of, like, snake oil salesmen, brother. You know? How, and, and you've done so well in pro wrestling. How do you protect yourself from pro wrestling? I think by becoming a force in pro wrestling, and also I think I've made some moves from the beginning that helped us. Like I had so many people when I announced my intentions to people in the business that I wanted to get into wrestling. Nobody gets it right all the time. I certainly don't get it right all the time. I've just tried to use my judgment, my uh, understanding of wrestling history, and everything I've learned in sports. Thanks. And we can rule the world. This is Wembley. It's the biggest show of my career. Don't tell me this is a vanity project for me. This is bigger than any WrestleMania. This is bigger than any Tokyo Dome. This is bigger than anything. Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay. Okay, so that's the fuzzy bit ended. We just kind of cut it there. We had the peak of our recording, and then at that point, it was, what, quarter past five or something? So, yeah. all right, that's it. I have a quick question to you. When you went back to rewatch it, did your thoughts on the fuzzy performance change in any way? The only thing I would say is, watching it back, I was thinking, I would have loved to experience that five minutes again in the crowd. Even though the crowd were amazing on TV, it wasn't replicated as much as really the impact that was had of 81,000 people in the stadium singing that song at the same time was amazing. It's true. It's like when you're watching it live, you don't see the show. A third of your senses are kind of taken up by just being in the crowd. Yeah. Even though it's the same show, it's a different show. Yeah, well, like, you know, because we all loved it. It was an absolute spectacle and we've relentlessly slagged Foggy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the rest <laughs> of the cast of the last of the summer was. <laughs> oh, Jay, that's do amazing. <laughs> Didn't he replace Campo? Well, no, no, Campo. Chris Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> um. Oh, uh, Rev Pro, Steve. Did you watch a bit of Rev Pro? I did. I did. <laughs> The Will Osprey versus Shingo Takagi main event on the Rev Pro 11th anniversary show, which was the night before All In at the Copper Box, their biggest ever show, like 4,000 people at it. Well done, man. Which was very, very impressive. First thing I'm, I'm going to say, and it's going to be a negative sort your audio out, lads. The fucking state of it, you can't hear anything. The music is. <laughs> <laughs> Osprey cuts a promo and you can't hear a word he's saying, so like that's really bad. Yeah, they need to use the soundboard audio. But the match was incredible. It was significantly better than anything that was on All In. Like just wiped the floor with it. That's a large claim. Yeah, just it was absolutely incredible. When you watch this match, it does become very evident that Osprey is the best wrestler in the world, or at the very least, he's the second best wrestler, depending on if Kenny is on his game that day. But yeah, they just tore the place up. There was a really impressive spot where Shingo whipped Osprey into the ropes. Uh, he threw him up into the air and he caught him and hit an amazing Samoan drop. 
Osprey made a comeback. Uh, Shingo cut him off, hit an alley oop suplex where he kind of dumped him over his head. Ooh, like the big show he's doing. Y- yeah. Followed it up with a wheelbarrow suplex to the turnbuckle and then a superplex from the top. Osprey's comeback where he reversed a made in Japan into a stun dog millionaire. Big fucking DDT, float over powerbomb, and then a cheeky Nando's kick in the corner. Medium spicy. Hey. <laughs> Just one or two more spots for the finish. They trade poisoned ranas, which they don't sell, which normally I'd give out about, but the fans absolutely loved it. Osprey hits a series of clotheslines and a stormbreaker. And then we were talking about finishing a match at the peak, and they just had like a series of high impact moves, each one better than the last. And I was watching it going like, lads, you've got to end it now. And then Osprey hits one more move and ended it at the perfect time. Brilliant match. Fantastic. And post-match, he gets attacked by a masked man. And it's like... A Chris Jericho-shaped yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need to take off the mask. You'd know his chest yeah. anywhere. Yeah. And he's a bit bow leggedy as well. There's a bit of that he, going on. He is. He, yeah. he's, he's a bit rickety, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a little yeah. bit rickety. <laughs> and a little bit rickety. <laughs> yes, way! This is the second time he's done that spot because he did it at the original All In. Yes, also, yes, yeah. Where he dressed, dressed up as Penta. Penta. Yeah. Mm. Very good. But not Negro. Mm. <laughs> Azura? Was there? No, there was Sinkara Azul, which is blue, right? Oh, oh, look at you. Oh, yeah. 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 Nice. Sinkara yeah. expert nice. over here. Yeah. Oh, very good, Sinkara very good. Sinkara expert. <laughs> Her residency. <laughs> <laughs> there are Put four of us in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and we meet up at least once a year. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you my thoughts on that, Josh. Sin Cara Negra. What is the build-up to this match? Hey, bruv, you're calling yourself a god, bruv. Stop calling yourself that, bruv. I'm better than bruv, bruv. <laughs> is that a minute? Oh, a bruv. Yeah. Pretty much. Was, was yeah. it like a five-minute promo? That's it? Yeah, yeah. that's it. Was there anything else? Do you know what's Don Callis' beef with Jericho? They were a tag team, what, 25 years ago, you know, and they were part of a stable with your boy, Bad News Brown. So Don Callis, who I love and we all love, of course. Yeah, yeah, he's brilliant. He's got the Don Callis family. I suppose technically there can be two people in a family because it's just him and Takesh. Okay, that's okay. So he wanted Jericho to join his family to make it a little bit more legit he start reminiscing about the old times when they were up in Canada. Come on, Chris, join back with me. And, you know, his promos are just outstanding. Jericho's weighing it up for what felt like months, but I'm sure it was only about two or three weeks. And in the midst of all this, the Jericho Appreciation Society, i.e. the Band of Jobbers, were saying, ah, this is ridiculous and you're not giving us any attention and it's either him or us. Jericho still wouldn't answer, so one by one, they left in a promo in the ring other than Sammy which I thought was a smart move kayfabe boys on Sammy's part because they're gone off to be jobbers I know Daddy Magic is your boy my boy but he's now a jobber yes <laughs> which, which only am- a job only amplifies the boy here yeah. yes so anyway it was all on tenter hooks and then all of a sudden Jericho comes out with Don Callis and has his decision made I've decided I'm going to join which I was shocked at and then he happened to notice there was a painting in the ring with a curtain over it. He said, what, what, what's that? Don Callis is like, ah, don't worry about it, forget it, forget about it. And Jericho's like, no, no, I want to see it. So he takes off the blanket and it's a painting of Don Callis holding Chris Jericho's head. What the? Wow. It's amazing. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty great. So nice. It's, it's, it's a great painting. It's a beautiful Caravaggio. Oh, very good. It's, it's a beautiful painting. And um, so obviously Jericho's not impressed. Did Takeshi attack him then? I can't remember that. Uh, Osprey. He attacked him after that, and then he cut the promo the week after. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. It was. It was a nice build to a match with Takeshi, not a match yeah. with Osprey. But yeah, yeah. 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 How, how unusual is it for me to run down what happened? Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty show. great. It was very yeah, weird. Really that. That. Yeah. Yeah. It was very nice though. Mm. I know I am the best wrestler in the world. All your championships, all your legacy. I respect it all, mate. 
Well, I'm better than you. Will Ospreay comes out in his French tights, stripes of red, white and blue. Havering London native Osprey kicks off hot with a spectacular sky twister. So fast they can't get a good replay of it. And a beautiful springboard forearm to a blind Jericho. The Ocho hits a German on the apron. The suplex, not a person. Nice crumple <laughs> physics, bro. Gets a bit of old school Jericho with a come on baby. One foot pin. Lion salt? Brov has it scouted. Replies with a shooting star press onto a teetering Jericho. Reverse- that was super impressive, by the way. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Reversal code breaker to the back. Code breaker to the front. Walls of Jericho. Callus distracts the ref and Sammy smack with the bat. No, that's not it. Osprey punches his way out and hits a Spanish fly. It would just look so spectacular. What's to prove? Flying nothing from Jericho, and Osprey hulks up. Whoa, whoa! Judas effect! One, two, no! It's just non-stop as they bring out the heavy hitters. The Englishman ending ahead. Judas effect by Osprey. Storm breaker. Hidden blade to the chin. Storm breaker again! One, two, three! And the Englishman wins it. Got Jericho up again! A second storm breaker! That is most certainly gonna be it! Brilliant. Loved it. Probably the best match of the night. If all you care about is the amount of moves that are done in the ring, then you'll probably say FTR versus the Bucks was the better match. But if you're into like storytelling and drama and timing and when you do a move, I thought this was the match of the night. I thought it was phenomenal. I think Chris Jericho gets a lot of flack. But I think when push comes to shove, when he's put in the brightest spotlights, he always delivers. Except for that Daniel Bryan match that they still <laughs> go last year. What was that? That was so boring. That was my most biggest disappointment of the year, yeah. that match, actually. Yeah. I love both of them. But yeah, loved it. I, th- I think Will Ospreay has the potential to be a megastar. Uh, it's rumoured that his new Japan contract is going to be open like six months, and Tony Khan should be already sending truckloads of money to Essex to get him out of that kip. <laughs> <laughs> Sign him, he's brilliant, make him your top guy. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Nothing to add. I agree with everything. Mm, (laughs) What a what a pleasure though, like in terms of the quality of wrestling on this card. Almost from top to bottom, it's just all fantastic. Yeah. I'm amazed that like this was a fantastic match, but I was more like Will Ospreay isn't signed to AEW. He's still in New Japan, but he's allowed to have this incredible match on the biggest pay-per-view AEW's ever had. Yep. Excellent pairing and pacing for Jericho. Osprey, a spectacular performer, and jumped and bumped like crazy here in Wembley. Over-delivered from what I expected in the match. I just want to say, obviously, we have a great time slagging Fozzy. You know, it's one of my most favourite things to do. <laughs> and Jericho. And he's been going so long. Fans are dying to be done with Jericho, to hate on him, basically. But the dude consistently reinvents himself, coming up with so many creative ways to refresh. So just like, well done, Chris. WCW Conspiracy Victim Jericho, Lionheart Jericho, Y2J, Undisputed Jericho, There Will Be Blood Suit Clad Jericho, The List Jericho, The Bubble Jericho. All right, you know, you've had Super Liger, Jericho, Painmaker. They didn't really work out, but he... I hate the Painmaker so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so shit. But he reinvents himself, and it works. And plus, he's got Compo Jericho. <laughs> That's next. Yeah. He's, he's in the works. Like. Dude. <laughs> Dude, book it. Tony, Tony. <laughs> One tooth. You know, old chopper here. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All you be quiet. Look at you. Nice hair, idiot. What's your name? I don't care. Shut your mouth. London, England! 81,035 fans! Tonight, we make a new worldwide record! Ooh, Nigel is in the ring to announce the attendance. AW All In from Wembley Stadium, London, with 200,000 TVs tuned in at home. Announced attendance of 81,000 paying fans. Announced attendance. But 
two and a half weeks later. Did you hear about I this? I did, uh, I did. In now. <laughs> Twitter going down in flames over yeah. this. The turnstile count came out, which is the flat number of people through the turnstiles at Wembley. 72,264. Obviously, this excludes corporate boxes, journos, no-shows, people that bought a ticket and didn't show up. So, not bigger than SummerSlam 92, which is 78.9 thousand, but 72 thousand is so impressive. Yeah. But it did it, sell more tickets, though. Yeah. Like my, yeah. My, my, my guess is that they were scalpers who were hoping it was going to sell out immediately. And then Idiot they'd, scalpers, yeah. And then they'd make a fortune, and then it's scalpers with 10,000 tickets going, oh, shit. Yeah, idiots. And so but, I'm delighted. But... Not that AEW have a smaller thing, but no, no, Albert yeah, get fucked. Fuck them. But their claim was correct. It was the biggest paid, uh, they said attendance, did they? They did say paid attendance. They uh, did say paid yeah, yeah, audience. Uh, one word. One word. But when you think about it, when you go back into your mind palace and you look at Wembley, yeah. it didn't look like 80,000. It looked like about 25% empty seats. I would have so said less than 72. By looking, purely looking at the empty seats, I would have said, ooh, this is like 60-ish, 65 maybe. Because there's a whole, loads of sections where the whole thing was kind of yeah. tarped off, yeah. But, alright, I just want to say like May 2nd, AW allotted 50,000 pre-sale tickets if you sign up. First day, 35,000 tickets. And then in the coming days, 50,000. We've used that all up. And then, of course, you had at least 72,000 ended up buying it. And I love that they didn't announce any matches when it was sold. So no one person, Punk, can take a credit <laughs> for selling these. Yeah. Which is incredible. It's on the brand itself and the goodwill of AEW. But that's, it's that point, the goodwill. That's the key point. Because they will never do it again. No. So in order for them to do those kind of numbers again, they would need to have the likes of a Brock Lesnar or a John Cena. You know, otherwise, there's nobody for AEW. For WWE, it's a different story. If you're going to want to do it again, you're going to have to have some kind of freak match. Like, Anthony Joshua is going to have to have a shoot fight against Miro or something like that, you know? He's a... He's English a boxing champion. Dirty boxer. Oh, right, right. Yeah, dirty. Dirty. Dirty but boxer, yeah. Even that, Steve, I'd be shocked. I think I don't think they can do this again. I think it's madness. Prove us wrong. Yes, Prove Tony Doom. But I think it's oh, fucking madness doing this again next year. I agree. Anyway, I hope it works out. Billy Gunn has been the victim of the end twice and thought we saw the end of his career. House of Mr. Black versus Scissor Me Timbers for the Trios Championship. Champions Malachi Black, Brody King and Buddy Matthews with Julia Hart versus, no relation, versus the Acclaims Platinum Max Caster and Anthony Bones and Billy Gunn. Badass Billy Gunn. Oh, isn't this so amazing? WWE let the copyright lapse and uh, old Kip Sop picked it up. Yeah, but everyone wanted daddy ass. Nobody wanted badass. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just on Julia Hart, if you're not related to the Hart family, change your name. Because all I was thinking up until you just said it right now, because I didn't bother looking into it, was, oh, wow, she must be like Teddy Hart's niece or, yeah. you know. <laughs> something like that. She's like half cat. <laughs> Comes out doing like backflips to the ring. <laughs> Puking. <laughs> Licking herself. <laughs> She's fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you're wondering, just last time on OSW covering AEW, we saw Malachi Black. He said he had to leave AEW to rethink slash retool. Give me space. He returned to AEW just under three months later in December 2022's Winter is Coming, Dynamite, teaming with Brody King and Buddy Matthews, beating Omega in the Bucks for the trio's belts in March. They've been winning lots on Collision, but is there any heat slash interest? No. Nope. I don't think so. House of Black are shit. Yeah. I'm like, sorry, but they're They're terrible. all really good wrestlers. Yes. But they don't have any momentum. They don't have any storylines or something to get no. me excited and, and, to see them wrestle. And you know why? Because if they did have a storyline and a feud, they'd ruin it with their garbled nonsense promos. How can you get behind them? This is the winter of your discontent. Exactly. So the seeds of our sadness. It's we crap. Run. Yeah, yeah. It is crap. How can I get behind a, a baby face team fighting these lads when I don't understand what the bad guys are saying? They're like all things that do not know that they have to cease. They have to be reminded. 
pretended that they were supposed to feel the maggots crawl through their head. Hey! Oh, no, no. Nothing! Listen! <laughs> All right, oh, no, yeah. no. Was like, wait, that's that's Ocarina of Time. Uh, yo, yo listen, listen, listen! Listen! That was terrible. London rap! Oh, this, this is like of the things that I was looking forward to most going to London, to seeing what Max Caster would say. The House of Black, a bigger disgrace than Prince Andrew. <laughs> Everybody missed the second line because everyone's going, oh! Yeah. Just so loud. You couldn't hear it. I played on the mic. It's nothing that we can't do. These guys are bigger disgrace than Prince Andrew. You're worse than Meghan Markle. You're such big wankers. You broke your metacarpals. You didn't believe me? Look, it's Harry, Hermione, and Ron Weasley. <laughs> Brilliant. It was so good. Oh, no scissor me daddy ass. Are we saving that for post-match? Let's find out. House of Black Lad stop Billy Gunn's suicide dive, a move he was never going to do. <laughs> <laughs> then Sultry Julia does the same. Oh man, she's young enough to be his daughter or... Possibly granddaughter, depending on what uh, stage. Yeah, she'll just do the 60 and she's like... Yeah, 20 Early 20s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very early 20s. Mm. Suck it! And scissor me leg drop to the yam bag. Uh, shot of Sasha... Do women have a yam bag? I reckon that the whole structure is the, the, the bag <laughs> of yam. Jesus. Um, sh- <laughs> shot of Sasha looking on. Oh, thanks for staying. I thought, you know, she would have sought it off by now. Gigantic bloke Billy Gunn whips off the shirt to face Matthews and Malachi alone. Bit of a brawl, bit of a schmoz. People throwing haymakers and changing who's in and who's out of the ring. I really like the sweep to bones, sold like it was actually swept. And what of the big back slap rake? Yes, Jay Hunter approved. Triple team corner. <laughs> Is that enough time so this match isn't a squash? Why, yes. <laughs> uh, Bowens with an incredible height rocker dropper from behind. Max with one from the front. What about Billy Gunn? Yeah, famous, sir. But Julie Hart puts a stop to the pin. The end. Kick out. Sorry, how's of black? The baby faces isolate Brody, each hit their finish, and are the new trio's champions. <laughs> And then a nice show of respect at the end there. And I was like, poor Malachi. Like, you, you came back for this? The, the worst thing you can be told as a heel wrestler, you're going to lose the belt. Not only that, you have to end the feud instantly by shaking their hand. <laughs> There's no rematch. <laughs> yeah. Move, on, yeah. move along. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Baby faces celebrate their new tag titles. But there's even newer tag titles on Dynamite. What happens? I love them so much. Do you watch the following Dynamite? Yeah. All right. So do you want to... Yeah, do, do you want to do? Uh, well, I mean... Well. well, Miss, oh, well. Man, Mr. <laughs> watches the weekly show here. <laughs> Two weekly shows, Jay. All right. Oh, my God. So the following Dynamite, out they come. And Daddy Ass is now Daddy Ass again. Yes. And he's wearing his pink getup and he looks ridiculous and it's fantastic. We're so happy. This is great. And we have a little surprise. And they have a table. They take off the blanket and reveal the new trio's titles. A hot pink leather strap. And if you'll give me a quick little twirl. Now, I did have an issue. I was expecting hot pink. They're more red, maybe orangey red than pink. They're not pink. Somebody fucked up there. <laughs> right? They got the font wrong or the, the font color wrong or the... The, yeah, the hex code. Yeah. yeah, they got the hex code. Thank you, Jay. They got the hex code wrong. But by far the best thing about these titles is they have, instead of just your standard clasp, they have scissors on the end. So when they're doing their scissoring, they all put the two sides of their belts in together and it looks fantastic. And it's, I am dead against individual uh, world titles, you know, like the Smoking Skull Belt, uh, John Cena's, even though I love John Cena's spinner belt, but in principle, I'm dead against it. But for a trio's title, yeah, go for it. Enjoy. Have fun. Yeah. I love the belts so much. I think they're so awesome. They're so fun. I do like when wrestling is fun, you know, especially in the undercard. Don't know if they're going to sell many. Um, it's wonderfully creative. Great. Such a great idea. And it was executed perfectly. Yeah. yeah. 10 overall matches down. One match left, because it's time for your made up and
It's your main event. It's Adam Cole, baby, versus MJF for the AEW World Championship. Ooh, before we get into the real ska, let me give you the fake ska, because <laughs> on the Wednesday before All In, Hot Ones, MJF and Cole were on it, where they eat hot wings. I only know about this because Brian Max Mann produced it. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Lads are on top form. MJF hates hot wings. You eat hot wings if you don't want to answer a question. You forfeit and you eat a wing. And he's asked, who's the biggest prick backstage? Which he considers and thinks better of it and eats a hot wing. Grimace is eating it, saying, is this how the poor is experience joy? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, later on, he doesn't answer a question. And he's like, oh, the first wing still hurts. <laughs> Uh, he's so funny and Cole is you know they're best friends in that and he's just saying oh you look so tough right now and he's like, oh thanks man <laughs> <laughs> they're such bro chachos mm. do you think they're shoot friends it feels like they're shoot friends it does and if they're not shoot friends then they're incredible actors yes. because they have convinced me that they are friends yeah. mm. you look tough right now do I really yeah you're you really look great tough. I freaking feel tough <laughs> yeah, yeah. alright yeah. Steve-O how did this bromance begin the man who'll be your partner in the tournament, MJF. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hey, hey, no. I do not want to team with him. Well, do you I'm hear sure. me? I am not teaming with him. You want me to wrestle every week? What are you out of your mind? Huh? You're, you're what a tag are you some team. kind of sick pervert? You're a tag team. Have at it, guys. This bromance began a couple of weeks ago when Tony Khan did a randomized tag team tournament. Tony Khan doesn't like tournaments. No. What? <laughs> hates tournaments, hates battle royals, <laughs> hates open challenges. <laughs> and one of those teams that was put together was MJF and Adam Cole. And people went, ugh. And then they just got so over. They clicked. By the time that they won the tournament and that they faced FTR on collision, the fans really wanted them to win the belts. And then they didn't, and the fans were genuinely sad. So now this tournament is over. It's time to start building up to All In, because, you know, Max is the world champion, and he's going to be wrestling Adam Cole, because they did have a singles match a few weeks earlier that ended in a time limit draw. And then Cole asked for five more minutes, and Max said no, and walked out. Everyone has just been counting down the moments until one of them turns. Everyone at first thought it was going to be Max because he's the kind of, you know... Uh, oh, he's the heel. He, he is the <laughs> devil, you know? <laughs> but then people start thinking like, oh, Max is getting really over and maybe they're going to go with him as a face. So maybe Cole is going to turn. I'm just watching at home going like, no one turn. It's so good. Keep it, just ride the wave until it's over, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's not time. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say that MJF is better or will ever be better than The Rock, okay? I'm just going to say that now because I don't want people to get upset, right? But holy shit, has there been anyone since The Rock that can do what he can do? He can get over a kangaroo kick, a stu- He's the world champion. He was heel only a few weeks ago. He's now the biggest baby face on the roster and he hasn't done that much to become a babyface other than be himself really charismatic really funny to get over a ridiculous move like a kangaroo kick and it's a comedy move a comedy move and it's over with me and i am the most jaded cranky wrestling fan (laughs) in the world and it's over with me and obviously the double clothesline spot as well it's it's hilarious his corner And they did the ridiculous skits backstage and in the restaurant and in the kids' play area. Adam Cole said, we'll meet in in a car park. So they met in the car park and they were in front of this, you know, kid zone, whatever it was. MJF is like, oh, for God's sake. But Cole convinced him to go in. MJF starts playing dodgeball with the kids. And of course, he's cleaning them out. (laughs) (laughs) Rinsing them. (laughs) Cleaning them out. It's great. And it's very good. And then Adam Cole is like, well, calm down, man. They're kids. And then a, a girl comes up and... She insults Adam Cole, I think, and he then cleans her out. (laughs) And it's just really funny. But um, I had a thought. Yeah, I didn't want them to break up or I didn't want either of them to turn heel, but they did some really good stuff. Like at one point they lost a match and Adam Cole turned his back 
and he's just do it just do it and MJF's behind him holding the, the world belt and you're expecting he's gonna lay him out but he doesn't and they hug it out instead but my thought was if they are going to break up and if MJF is going to be the heel in this what I would have loved to see was they keep teasing the double clothesline and they were teasing it for a while before they broke it out and then they have their world tag team match at FTR and they finally do the double clothesline MJF says, I can't believe we're going to win the world titles. He pins him. Dax kicks out at one. And that changes MJF's whole opinion of Cole and his friendship and why. What's the point in having friends? They're useless. We don't get along. We don't do anything. We don't win matches. And he attacks him. But I'm glad they did what they did. But I was kind of hoping they'd do something along those lines. That would be hilarious. So you build up this move for weeks and weeks and weeks and they hit it and it's shit. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, that'd be really good. Yeah. I'd probably have just Adam Cole to turn because we've seen Max as a heel and he's new as a baby face, so don't turn him back. But okay. Cole as a heel would be new. Yeah, I would I would new like dynamic. to see that at yeah. some point, yeah. Donning the better than you baby shirts. Well, it's like two teammates wearing the same jerseys in practice battling against each other. Can we get it like a friends forever? Friends forever. Wrestling in their tag t shirts incredible the intrigue is who will win and how and will their friendship survive hot dog in the kickoff flare strut from max plus the rick rude swivel hips and uh don't you do it don't you do it adam cole baby mjf masterful crowd worker gets a sportsmanship 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 chant going Shake hands, poke to the eyes. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Soaks in the booze. He gets pro wrestling so hard. The bout is both wrestlers trying to navigate a high stakes sporting contest, the main event of the biggest AW show of all time, wanting to maintain their relationship, but also not entirely trusting that the other one won't break it. Like Cole says, we're friends, but I'm better than you and ripping off his teammates t-shirt. To huge heat. Huge. Of dynamite two and a half months ago. He landed the boom. Well, there goes the jersey. This is the only time this will ever work that in like the main event of a WrestleMania level pay-per-view, your two main eventers wrestle in t-shirts. Yes. You yeah. <laughs> it's just like yeah. Ric Flair versus Thing in the final <laughs> night show. <joke. laughs> <laughs> and, and by the way i did hate it i yeah. I, I was how dare you wear t-shirts yeah. uh, mjf with a perfect suicide dive to cole and marks out at himself max you want a tombstone cole on a table no he feels too bad about it does cole feel the same way no bang i loved that spot and the table didn't break the announcers, quick as anything, were, and I said, oh, the reason this table didn't break, let me tell you folks, so <laughs> let me tell you something, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> There's a like a metal girder under this, keeping it all together, and so when his head hit the desk, it's basically like just hitting metal. I was like, that's a great call, lads. Very good. Big boot! MGF comes back with a lariato! But what about a Canadian destroyer? Okay, but take a kick before I go down. <laughs> single plane crisscross double knock and one two three both men's shoulders are down the match is a draw i love that in the kayfabe of this tag team the double clothesline can be performed on each other and it's just <laughs> as effective it can end <laughs> wrestlemania <laughs> brilliant five more minutes no, we're going until we have a winner in fucking London. Place goes insane. No way. Next five more minutes. We're going till we got a winner in fucking Wembley. Fun panto spot as they hot potato with a chair. Cole is going to play like he was knocked out. So MJF hangs the chair on his neck. This is like Eddie Guerrero levels of lie, cheat, and stealery. And now MJF, the chair wrapped around his head. As he outsmarted the challenger. He definitely did match did. Canadian Destroyer to Max on the outside. It's like, I don't know if the Aloha Iron accounts for height. <laughs> <laughs> Roderick Strong, Pearl Harbor's MJF, but Cole can't capitalize. 
Cole, however, has the AEW title. Will he use it? A doughty move? And turn on his friend? No! He throws it out of the ring to a huge pop! This act of kindness is his undoing as MJF takes advantage with a schoolboy and one, two, three, MJF retains in 29 minutes. Nine minutes. Wow, it flew in. Like it flew in. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. It was shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird because there was like a very vocal fan base who didn't like this match. Is it because it's kind of storyline driven? I, Character driven? That's it, yeah. I think that there's a very vocal subset of the AW fam. Actually, I don't think it's a subset. I think it's a large portion of the fan base that they're very move orientated fans and they want spots and they want high pace high octane action especially in a main event and some people viewed this as like uh this is like a wwe match and it's like it was the most over thing on the entire show it worked there were 72,000 fans on their feet loving every seconds of it the 29 minutes flew by uh you've got the two most over acts in the company going out there and just the fans in the palm of their hands and i thought they were masterful and i'm glad that the feud isn't over that they can keep going as a tag team and then they can eventually run this match back and i think it's going to be even bigger second time around okay what do you think what do you think main event of all in you know me i love a spot fest and i love moves and I think we had enough of that before this match. Exactly. Yeah. So it was welcome for me. It was something different. It was a storyline match that they had been building for weeks and building so well. And I think if they just went and had a wrestling match with great moves, which both can do, it wouldn't have had the impact. This was a storyline match. Crowd were invested. Keep them invested all the way to the end, which they were. And as you say, 29 minutes felt like 15 max. Yeah, loved it. But one thing I've been really enjoying, and I'm I'm just fascinated to get your opinion, Steve, on this. Roddy, your boy Roddy Strong, he's been quite good. He's been great. Hey, 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 yeah. 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 Vindication. <laughs> Vocal hater <laughs> has been turned. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've found the perfect gimmick for him. I think he's smashing it out of it. Moaning and about Adam Cole finding Adam! a new friend. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. It's it like yeah, it's doing so well. And there's multiple combos that they can do in in this feud. Like you can have MJF versus Roddy. You can have Roddy take on Cole. You can do triple threats. And then when you add in the Kingdom, you can have them go for the ROH tag team. You can have two on three. Like there, like there's months of matches that you can get out of that before you even turn anyone or do any major changes. Um, I think when, it's brilliant. If you are going to turn Cole and get him the world title he will have the kingdom backing him up yeah and helping him to win the world title so yeah there's there's stuff here there's yep. stuff here Jay what do you think yeah oh my god electric crowd rightful main event and they worked and fed off everyone in attendance continuing the story with a satisfactory conclusion without either kind of heel turning and ending the friendship ending this part of the storyline yeah agreed with you guys um I love that Bret Hart, Roddy, Piper, WrestleMania 8 finish mindset. Piper wanted the IC title so bad, he got the belt. He considered hitting Bret with it. So you can have the win if you turn heel. And that was the crux of this. Neither wanted to do that. And Piper relented, and that cost him the bout. And same with Cole and MJF here. Fantastic end. Well done, lads. Whopper, whopper. Yeah. I had to go back and see where it cut off on the pay-per-view because MJF got on the mic. He put over AEW and put Adam Cole over. Uh, actually, there was a bit just after the match, Babyface Max is consoling Adam Cole. He's like, don't be like that. Don't cry. Come on, everyone. Cheer for Adam Cole. <laughs> hey, here's your Ring of Honor tag title. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what a Here, put that on your wrist. <laughs> <An> absolute. <laughs> put it on your wrist. Uh, and just uh, he does give the mic to Adam Cole who says hey we're coming back to London next year and then uh, Tony 
Dory comes in the ring and he says, hey, the exact same thing that Adam Cole just said. <laughs> <laughs> and then we head off. Yeah, splicey a bit of whatever we recorded there. But man, yeah, fantastic end. Wonderful night. Electric experience with such a crazy huge crowd. Congratulations, lads. Oh, see, how did you find this one? Great show. Much better watching it on the TV so I could actually see what's happening. We had great seats. Thank you, Jay. Oh, you're welcome. It was still shit. (laughs) (laughs) I'll rescind that welcome. (laughs) Like, wrestling is not a spectator sport unless you're ringside. And I'm talking first five rows. Otherwise, forget it. Because when I sat down, I was like, this time... I'm going to watch the wrestlers in the ring. And I didn't. And I just watched the screen. And what's the fucking point? Crowd were, as you say, electric, amazing. Made the show. And I I really think that the most important thing about any pay-per-view for any wrestling company is the crowd. I genuinely think it's more important than the, the wrestling. If you have a hot crowd, you can have shit wrestling. Hogan Rock, WrestleMania 18. They certainly had shit wrestling. Uh, they're both shit wrestlers. The crowd are amazing and made the match. And like leave in that I said the Rock is a shit yeah. wrestler And again I, yeah, I, who's going to have I the was... fucking balls To say anything <laughs> to me Nobody Hey there Mr. O.C. It's DJ here <laughs> You have some bad things to say about me On the old podcast <laughs> Wow he hit Black Adam's Failure hard there. Yeah. <laughs> Going after wrestling podcasters now. <laughs> now, now, we're, now we're coming to the negatives Show great Watching it at home on my couch Great Being in the, in the stadium Awful Oh. Okay, and the reason being in the stadium was awful is because I hate wrestling fans. <laughs> <laughs> and and by the way, it's not just I hate football fans as well. I've been in football stadiums. You hate being hate. around the general public. Yes, yes, that's it. Definitely when there's alcohol being sold as well. Yeah, it, it doesn't makes help. It, worse. it really doesn't help. Like by the time you are walking back to the apartment, I'm sure every, it was empty. The place is empty. When I was walking back, you had. No, it was worse. You had every second person doing the LA Night thing. Oh, there was yeah, yeah, that thing. Every second person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every second person. Yeah. Yep. When I went to the loo, there was a lad doing, and people were like, "Fuck off! This is AEW." Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's good when you do it. Uh, I, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I did love the experience of being in their live and being around the crowd. I thought it was crazy. You are not allowed to have a press box seat because you'll like it too much. <laughs> because you'll be separated from the fans, yeah, but in yeah, the yeah. arena. It's the ivory terror experience. And to be know. fair, we were 15 feet away from even more rowdy fans than the ones that we were in our seats. Oh, yeah, and they, they stood were up for the on, whole thing. On their oh, no. feet banging the roof Listen. and everything yeah. It was <laughs> yeah there was one annoying guy behind us oh, oh my god he was he was, it was, he was. It was five hours it, of it, it, trying it, it was to start bad. every chance but and but that's because he wants to impress his twitter follower like you know that's that's what that, i get it i get it <laughs> that bloke behind us who tried to get chance going for five hours straight like everything like brit baker come out she's a dentist 
<laughs> She's a dentist. It is factually correct. Yeah. You know, we get a trio's title change. Don't run with scissors. <laughs> Don't run with scissors. <laughs> Just like, just big, big, bell end, larger, loud energy, you know? Um, and on that bombshell. <laughs> Fantastic. This show, too big to contain to just one video. Oh, SW will be back next time for AEW All Out and CM Punk. So, from AEW All Out in London, it's V1. Oh, dig a boo. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> OC. Do. And your boy, Jay Hunter, the two and a half time Golden Nogger Award winner. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> <laughs>